Hello. Hey, everybody. Hi. How are you? It's Tuesday, um, April 19th. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. I check everything and then, <clears throat> and then I run around doing nine other things before the show begins. And who knows what happens to me from the time I check it the last time, the time uh, we go live. We're live. Um, it's not for the faint of heart. Have you ever been live on camera three times a week, not really knowing what will happen, gathering together material that you're going to explore together with people on a platform that's new to pretty much everybody who uses it? It's not a challenge to you. It's um, an invitation. Uh, I, I'm having the time of my life doing this. I love it, and uh, I can't do it unless you're here. I mean, I could. There's lots of like tutorials out there. It's like, you know, are you streaming on Twitch to one person? Here are tips. And it's like this, I mean, when I say it's the saddest thing in the world, it is, but it's very sweet, you know, because like people want to start a Twitch channel and most of the time they're playing video games and stuff. And so they're like, I really want to get my Twitch channel going, but nobody's watching me. How do I like talk to somebody who isn't there? And it's so sweet, you know, and I, I'm not trying to be patronizing, but it's like, like the pathos is real, you know, because they're like, find out what you like, and talk about what you like. Like, you know, today, this video is going to be about confidence, you know, so, so get your confidence in yourself and just talk about the things you like and welcome anybody who comes into the room. And, and, you know, that's probably tough. Although talking to myself, I can do that. <laughs> um, Everybody, oh, oh, my volume's low. Okay, okay, hang on, hang on. Is, is this is this better? Is this better? I tested, okay, I tested. Okay, good, I tested some different things with the mic. The thing, okay, so I should always glance down, right, at the chat before I, before I start riffing. Um, I did do something to the microphone. I, I set some different levels. Um, let me see, let me see. Hang on now. I'm so glad I'm here too. Oh my God. Oh my God. Um, everybody's here. Jill and Susan and Word and Bird Nerd and Sue. I mean, Susan and Sue and NDH and Padma and Pip and L Riggs and Myra and Elaine, Miss Elaine and Quilty Mouse. Quilty Mouse. Precious. Precious indeed. Um, Charles and Sandy Tries and a Nun Maker. The gang's all here. If I haven't said hi yet, ciao. I shall. Bridgewater. Great to see you. Fiendor in the chat with the tunes. So um, I added a uh, sound effect. Okay, wait, I was telling you about the mic. So, so tonight, you know, last week at this time, the Tuesday night show, I think it was, we had noise. Uh, and we've had noise since I moved to the office. Um, last week, there was a, a gentleman in the office next door in this co office, and he was loud on the phone. And it's funny, there were two or three empty office like spaces that we could have rented when we got here like a month ago or two months ago. And of course we picked the one that's like next to the only other company or, you know, renter who's here like early and late. <laughs> like no one else is here except those guys sometimes. God bless them. Um, so so that's funny. But um NDH. So uh, anyway, it was a problem last week. I mean, you know, he was talking pretty loud, and I was like, I don't know if that's like a Tuesday night thing that he does. I'm gonna have to, gonna have to knock on his door and be like, hey, I do a live stream. If you don't mind, we're lowering your voice, which nobody likes to. Um, but I was ready. But he's not here tonight. But in preparation for that possibility, I was um, hey, Quack Quack Cat. Setting in to rip some seams. Gotcha. Ooh, you sewed in the squares on the wrong color. That's hard. It hurts. It hurts. You could claim you meant, to, meant them to be this way, but she says, but I will. Um, so, hey, Ivy. So I, I looked at a YouTube video, you know, about setting your, your microphone, your Yeti, uh, to, uh, you know, respond better and to be better if there's ambient sound, you know, and stuff. So, so I did, I did mess with things, but it should, it might be different and it might be a little lower than usual in some respect, you know, I'm not sure 
but but it it should be more focused on 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 my voice and not getting all this other sound so that if that fellow does come on the phone or if there is a siren out there which has also been kind of hot um hopefully it won't be so bad so you might have to turn it up a little bit but hopefully you will not have to you won't have to be interrupted we won't be interrupted by you know the sounds of life we can block everything out so myra what do you think i i see your thanks i susan i like this quilt too wait till you hear the story um myra mentioned it being a little bit low hey karen hey d marie and and d marie you were saying it's low too so volume is low okay and and let's see let's hmm. scroll down a little bit hey stephanie cake dan your volume's good people had kind of like you know some were saying it's fine echo so is here yippee i have a new sound sound effect that's a champagne cork let me turn it up hold on I can't make it any longer than that. I really tried to find some different ones. Echo, so this is for you. Um, I mean, I don't think it gets any louder or longer. So everybody, we're going to celebrate. It's over before you know it. But, but it was good while it was. And Hicks. So, um, so okay, so let's see. Is it better? So that's, that's the reason the sound might sound different is, is it's intentional. Or a little Spitfire. Um, background no noise doesn't bother you horribly little bit fire, specifically sirens, gives context. You know, I live in Chicago. Division. Division is right out there. You know, Division Street is a very uh, historic street. Nelson Aldrin, great. He wrote The Man with the Golden Arm. And uh, a book of poems called Division Street. Right out there. Uh, yeah, sirens, it's going to happen. But, you know, let's see. Cutting out a smidge. It's cutting out a smidge? Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. That. Okay. Hang on. Hang on. Hmm. I. To fix that. I know how, so hang on. Okay, so the sound might sound different, like like actually sound like a different tone, but you yeah, that's weird. I don't want that. I don't want the dropping out of things. I mean, I tested the sound, but I don't think I listened to long enough uh, of me talking but to hear that. So what is, how does this sound now? Can you hear me? Hmm. So, I mean, I thought I was being so, so slick, you know? Hmm. Hmm. Sounds okay. All volumes at 100%. Okay, so this is good. Okay, sorry, everybody. <laughs> That's what you get for, like, trying to fix a problem. Um, I think that that's not cutting out as much as it was. Well, now I turned off anything that would do that, so I just sort of put back what we had. And that's okay, because the guy isn't next door. And maybe Chicago will be quiet tonight. Um, but, but okay. But we'll, I'll, it always takes a couple. Um, all right, so so I hope folks are well. I think this should be just fine. Found it's basically a reset to what we had before. And um, there are many things to share. Number one, uh, yeah, is the champagne cork. Uh, that's exciting. A new sound, exciting. And then um, there is also I have to tell you. <laughs> oh, thanks, Miss Eleni. Thank you. Well, talk about effort forget about it i mean tonight we got a poll i have a quiz in pocket man we do a quiz it's only three questions but i was thinking you know we haven't done a quiz in a while and people learned how to do the quiz you know the first time it was kind of a crack up and we did it another time and we're figuring it out and people were helping people toggle the thing so they could play the quiz and i mean i think we should give it a try it's just three questions. a lot of fun and actually it plays into one of my announcements so I think we have to do it. 
first, <laughs> Padma, I think, you know what I think? I think you are behind these sound effects. Oh, right, Padma. Uh, a dog howling? Well, we do have this. No, we don't have the dog in here. Okay, dog howling, like howling wolf. Dog howling for race. Noted. Um, a pole. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Or a little spitfire. Never, never, uh, oh. Spitfire. Okay, so, just so Jane. Just so Jane, you're here. Okay, so somebody is getting, so Henry is getting a little bit of, you know, sound. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep going. So far, I mean, I see you. I see you. I see you. So maybe, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hang on, hang on. I mean, I re I don't want that to happen. I don't want that happening because, like, that's really annoying. So. Okay, I did one other thing. Mm -hmm. Noise canceling settings are being local. <laughs> well, now I am basically back exactly where I was. Okay, better? Oh, good. Oh, thank God. Okay, that's good. I turned up the gain. I know what gain is. I don't really know what it is, but I remember it was different. Okay, it's so Natalie's watching while you work from home. Oh, good. Whew. All right. So let me put up a poll because poor little Spitfire. Hey, Kenny is is not has not done a poll yet. So I've got it all ready to go. It's queued up. If you've never been to this show before, we just have fun. We hang out a little bit, you know, in the beginning. Trying to, you know, trying to just get settled, basically. So this Friday, see, I integrated the announcements with the uh, fun things. So I wanted to announce that, you know, this Friday is Quilter's Newsletter Friday. And so we will be reading an issue of Quilter's Newsletter together. I'm so glad the sound's fixed. Oh my God. Um, it's really a buzzkill uh, if it's bad. So we're going to read an issue of Quilter's Newsletter. Are we going to read an issue of Quilter's Newsletter from April 1986? Oh, thank you, Quack Quack Cat. And or are we going to read an issue from Jan Feb 1994? You have the power to decide if you want to vote in the poll. It's very fun to do that. Um, you just click and the mods. God bless my mods. Thank you so much. Um, can help you, too. But at the top of the chat screen, you should a uh, little chat window thing up uh, on your Twitch do hickey whatever you're doing uh using and um you can you can just click uh which year that uh, appeals to you more uh whether it's 1986 and let me just tell you i mean you know you clearly have some thoughts but let me just open to a random page hmm. oh wow whoa hmm silent auction this is from the 1986 issue silent auction raises money for cqc and the quilt conservancy Excuse me, the Quilt Conservancy? <laughs> um, that is really interesting. The Quilt Conservancy. The Continental Quilting Congress? Are you kidding me? Wow. The Quilt Conservancy raises money to donate to museums and other qualified organizations that agree to preserve and display quilts for the education and enjoyment of the public. Thank you. The Continental Quilting Congress, you are kidding me, promotes quilting through a wide variety of edu educational channels. Let me vote for 1986, which is ahead by a lot. But anyway, but 1994 is no slouch. What have we got in here? <laughs> oh, well, look. How about this? Look at this. You're going to miss this. Fairfield Processing Inc.'s 15th Annual Fashion Show Diamond Jubilee. If, you, if we don't read 1994, we're not going to get that. Whoa. Wow. But you know what? You know where this lives? 1994? 
right over there. It's not going anywhere. The Quilting Continental, the Continental Quilting Congress. I mean, okay, so it looks like we're gonna read 1986. It's ahead by, it's 82% of you are, are wanting us to read 1986 on Friday. So let's do it. Let's just end the poll because uh, we, ha we have a quiz to do. And the quiz is, okay, I'm ending the poll. I'm ending the poll. If you didn't get to vote, don't worry. There will be other polls in the future. Um, looks like we're going to do this one on Quilter's Newsletter Friday, 1986. Um, and <clears throat> that's 7 p.m. on Friday. Um, yeah, yeah. I just scan in an issue of a really great quilt magazine from the past, and we read it together and hang out. And it's like chips and wine. I mean, it usually is. But, um, but yeah, Friday night, it's pretty chill. It's a different format. Um, yeah. And it's less work <laughs> for me usually, except I try to make it more work, but I have to try to not do that. Uh, it's a good time. So yeah, we'll read that, that issue from 86. It'll be great. And it's a really, hopefully, yeah, the hats, all rigs, like seriously. Um, and, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah. Th this show, you know, like if you haven't been here before, like, I don't know, it's, it's really fun to me, for me, and it's really fun for the people who come to this show um, because we get inspired by the things that I have the pleasure to bring you. And um, because it's a live stream, it can just go as long as it does. And, you know, I've been working on YouTube videos, like short, short little videos. And it's so interesting because like they, they both take the same amount of time, I feel like, like in different ways, like I'm scripting a few things and that takes time and then like editing and stuff takes time. But but I think um, what's what's cool about this program and any live stream, and I encourage you to find other live streams, like on Twitch, there are people doing really interesting things. Artists, there are some quilt makers. I think there ought to be many more who are sewing in their studio, just turning on the camera, hanging out. Like there's a lot of quilt makers I think people would like to hang out with. And I mean, I don't know, like if you if you were a quilt maker, of, of any kind of skill or talent, or if you just, if you don't know what you're doing, but you're really dedicated, uh, then you're a beginner. That's your angle, right? You've, you've got this, you know, studio where you're like crying and people are like, I understand. Um, but you know, live streaming, I think is really, is really something more people will be doing. And I think the, the benefit, the reason live streaming works really well for us, for our people, for creative people, and especially those of us who you know, who make quilts and love them, we spend a lot of time in those studios, you know, and, or, or at the kitchen table, wherever you sew. I don't have a studio myself, but if I'm quilting or something, I always turn on a live stream. And it's not a quilt live stream because there aren't that many of them. And I do turn on some and Quiltoni is a great channel on this platform. But Twitch is really great for live streaming. And so because this show doesn't have a cutoff time, um, we just kind of go and I get excited about the stuff I found <laughs> to show you. And it ranges from art to, I mean, it's all quilt related, but you know, art and, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, we, we just talk about all kinds of things, uh, you know, economics and fashion and philosophy and all these different things. And, and it's kind of, it's chill. It's chill with like spikes of like the best kind of excitement, you know, where it's like, oh, I love that thing. Or like, oh my God, I want to do something with that. Or... I didn't know about this artist or I didn't know about that quilt maker or how did she do that? How did she make that? And so, yeah, I think I think that's the reason I even mentioned it is because Quilter's Newsletter Friday is like really like that. You know, like it's even more like get your project out. It's the end of the week. You know, turn on Quilt Nerd and, and chat with the people in the chat if you if you want to communicate. <laughs> if you want to communicate. If you want to, and, and I hope you do, because the people, if you can, if you've noticed, I mean, these are really nice people with like lots of skills. Uh, they can help you and th they can help you with questions and things, not just about Twitch. We all have them about how to get the sound right, for example. But they, all, they also have uh, great advice about quilt making. There's also beginners in here too. So, you know, you can lurk, it's cool. I still think there's probably an ex-boyfriend out there. I mean, it's just, it's, it's self-centered to think that, but I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, a couple of them are definitely on Twitch. Anyway, uh, so you can lurk is what I'm saying, if whoever you are. Um, 
So do you, okay, wait, wait, hold on. So Bridgewater was saying you found, oh my God, you found a Twitch bartending show. That's so great. It's so great. So on Positive Threads was five in 1986. You know what? I was seven. Um, so millennial. No, I'm a, well, anyway, we can talk about that later. Um, I consider myself a zennial, but you are a millennial for sure. Anyway, um, bartending show. I saw a girl, a, a wonderful violinist playing violin for like, she was practicing. She was practicing her violin in a very intentional way. And you can turn her on her channel and then just listen to her play. So it's pretty cool. Um, our, my show is Spicy Chill. Spicy Chill. So, and Joie de Vivre, you were 11 in 1986. Stephanie Cake, I think we have a cohort at this point. Okay. So we start the show with the quilt behind me. Um, and uh, we, I do have a quiz, but let's, let's do this first because, oh, whoa, whoa, is Pam in here? I do have to say one other thing about the quilt nerd directory. And I have it all ready to go. So, um, no, wait, horrid little spitfire. I, you know what? I might have missed something that you said, but I, I, I mean, all is well. I, 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 I might have missed something, but you, you are a, you are perfect. You are a perfect angel, even if your name is horrid little spitfire. So here is a Google form. I'm going to put it in the chat. Um. So when, when I say, so Pem Burrito worked on this and it's a, it's a, that's a link for, whoops, that's a link for, no, I didn't do that very well. There's a Google form for the Quilt Nerd directory. And then there's a spreadsheet for the directory itself. Now, you know, putting a link out to the world for a directory. I mean, I, I think, I think I've done that right, Pem, because I was talking about it with you earlier. Um, you know, you're not giving your address, you're not giving your phone number, you know, it's a Google form so that people know your Instagram or they know maybe what state you're in or something like that. It, it just click that and, and you can just kind of see, you know, um, the current sub count. Um, so I just looked at it earlier. Um, so yeah, so if you want to put your social media stuff in the Quiltner directory, it'd be great because not everybody uses the Discord the disco um some people use it subscribers you always get access to the discord the quilt nerd discord which is really fun it's a great place to be um but if you don't use it that's totally fine it's totally cool you don't have to but uh but if you want to sort of be known to the people who watch this show and you want to share your social media and stuff you can click on that and and do that um let me well here it is here yes the twitch I mean, the sub count is at, mm -hmm, I think it's like 172, it's 172. And Robin's Nest, thank you for resubscribing and Quilt Demo, subscribe for six months uh, at tier one. And I appreciate you Quilt Demo if you're in, in the show tonight, if you're watching, if you're here, I appreciate it. So uh, I'm gonna do a giveaway when we hit 200 subs and we will get there. And, um, Oh, Jan Makes Stuff needs the Discord access. So if somebody could help her out, one of the mods would be great. We definitely want you to be able to get in there because it's a good time. Okay, so let me do this. And I'm going to take one second to make sure the mic is okay when I change the screen. So hang on one minute. Okay, we should be good. Um, this, uh, this quilt is special. It's special because um, tomorrow, uh, yeah, Jan, I make sure we know if you don't get it, okay. So tomorrow is my th three year anniversary with, uh, I, I'm gonna try to not cry, but tomorrow is my anniversary to Eric. We have three years of marriage and I, was married long ago. I mean, I don't even like to bring it up, but it's a fact, right? I was married many, many years ago. Like, I mean, I got married in 08. And I mean, I've been long, I've been married longer now than I was <laughs> that first time, you know? And, and, and I, I mention it because like, it's been in my mind, like, I couldn't wait to get to that moment. And I don't know when exactly it turned, but I love him. 
I love him so much. I love him more every day. And and in case you haven't heard the story, and I don't think I've told the entire story because I mean it's you can't write this stuff. It is a movie worthy script worthy story. Really. <laughs> and um I mean, the short answer is, you know, the short version is that I married him four months after I met him and I love him more every day. And I can't believe that he's real. And tomorrow, three years, you know, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Who is this person? I'm just like, sometimes I get scared because I think, is this real? Like, please don't die. Please don't go away because he came into my life as this, you know, it was so amazing. And it's like, I don't know. I have abandonment issues. <laughs> Let's keep things light. Anyway, <laughs> so so this quilt is is called the honeymoon cottage. And thanks Meyer, thanks everybody. Oof. So he uh I know, I know, I know. I mean, I I know it's, it's silly. I I yeah. Um it's a bad habit uh for me. But anyway, um he he's just yeah, he's just a dream. And so I was thinking since tomorrow is Wednesday, uh, I would sort of celebrate it now with you. <laughs> and uh, Mademoiselle Larry, please don't die. You can relate. I mean, really, it's just like, I love you so much. <laughs> don't die. Why does it have to be that way? You know, but I think it's in, well, it's in me and it's maybe in my family. We're just like, things are great. Don't get too comfortable. <laughs> but anyway, so this September, Robin's Nest is going to have 40 years. You and your husband. That's so cool. 28 years for Dee Marie. So, so this quilt, so I was thinking about, you know, I should do like a wedding quilt, you know, that should be the intro quilt for sure. And there's a million wedding quilts and it's wonderful. And there's some really famous wedding quilts, you know, that are just bananas. And of course there's many that are just beautiful and we like beautiful quilts, but we also like kind of a different angle around here, right? Uh, uh, in this, in this community, little bird stitch. I don't know if I said hi, but hello. Um, and so it's 27. 27 years for you and Mr. Cake, says Stephanie. I love that. Um, so, so I, I got this, this quilt instead. And uh, this quilt is Honeymoon Cottage. And in fact, I'll tell you, I, uh, I actually picked this one originally. But then, and I don't worry about this too, too much, but with this, uh, you know, this old hoodie you've seen me in in like a, a million times. Um, I don't know, I didn't like the way it looked. I, I thought the contrast was better and maybe it's not so silly. I mean, I really care about these things. I'm an editor, <clears throat> a quilt maker, contrast is important. So, so I went with this version of the same pattern, which is Honeymoon Cottage. Um, so this, so I'll read to you from um, something that I, I got about this, um, this quilt, this version of it. Um, and it's from, so, so it's okay. Mm -hmm. Honeymoon Cottage. Okay. Pieced picture quilts depicting houses began to make an appearance in the late 1800s and enjoyed special popularity in the 1890s. And then again in the 1830s, Honeymoon Cottage was designed by Ruby Short McKim. Hey, QB Tara. Ruby Short McKim, and you know about Ruby McKim. We've talked about her when I was in Winterset in February. I showed you some templates that my mother had still stuck in her book of Ruby McKim patchwork patterns. Remember in 1976, Ruby McKim is a very famous quilt maker. She'll come up again, but we did some stuff on Ruby McKim back in February. Um, this quilt was designed by Ruby Short McKim in 1930. It was available as a mail order pattern from Sears, Roebuck and Company, and was, was described by the designer, quote, the honeymoon cottage has a quaint old-fashioned charm that will appeal to all lovers of a squat, broad-eaved little home with wide, hospitable doorway and fireplace. Very nice. Um, and so this is another version of it. And, and, and it's, it's nice, right? That, that road that, well, I mean, it says the um, a little, little home with a wide, hospitable doorway and fireplace. I mean, look at the lane up to it, you know, or the sidewalk or the it's nice, isn't it? It might match a Sears kit house. That's a really, that's good word and bird nerd. You get the, you get the nerd award. I mean, a kit home from Sears and a quilt to match. It's a great reference. 
Um, and so, and so, yeah. So the red and green version of this pattern, back to this, shown in uh, this image. Sorry, the picture. Okay, um, reflects a popular color scheme of the time. Bungalows were as familiar to 20th century quilters as the log cabin was to their ancestors. The bungalows are quilted with a grid pattern. This is true on this version as well, you guys, obviously. Um, mm -hmm, and they're filled, uh, okay, the two and a half inch wide border. Um, and the quilt is bound with strips of red fabric, that, that version I showed you earlier. Um, Kenny says the other one has better definition. I agree. And this is a block I found elsewhere. So I was looking for, I found, you know, I found the Honeymoon Cottage, the red one in a book, and I had so many books out today. I could find it in the stack, but. Um, but then I went looking for more versions of it because I didn't like what I was wearing. I didn't like it uh, with that quilt. So then I found a couple others. And so this is from Vintage Blessings and the other was from, the other was from uh, Stella Rubin, I think. Yes, it was. In fact, I have printed off what, it, what she had to say about it. So let me just read it real quick about this one. Uh, the Charming House, oh, it's $875 by the way at Stella Rubin, a uh, famous quilt dealer, quilt seller who recently passed away, but her website still is up and running and doing its thing. Um, so, mm -hmm, yep, okay, we, we know this, da da da. This example of Honeymoon Cottage has a combination of solid and gingham fabrics, most likely sold by McKim, that make a soft yet lively composition. It is in unwashed condition. There is one spot about the size of a dime, mm, gross, uh, okay, da, da 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 Yeah, okay, great. 79 by 80, Western Pennsylvania, circa 1935. Hmm, interesting. And then, what do I think I have one other detail picture of it. Hmm, what could it be? What could it, what could it be? Oh, what? Oh, how, well, what about that? How, who was that? Who, who were those people? Why, it's Eric Meland and I on our wedding day. Oh my God. <laughs> So we got married at City Hall. And when I, was, when I did it before, it was a whole thing. And it was a great day. It was a great day. You know, I had like six bridesmaids because he had like six guys. So I had matching dresses. And I mean, it was great, you know. But I was like, <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. And it was, I don't know. I should, I should really write the whole thing. I mean, I have written the whole thing down in my journal, but anyway. I wore, <clears throat> I wore what I wore when I met him, which was this. I've got this split screen. <laughs> that's not Eric on his wedding day, on our wedding day. That's just him being adorable and amazing. Um, but th there's me on the left uh, on the day I got married to him. And I'll tell you this much. So we, we went to City Hall and it was amazing. I mean, it was just a bunch of people, just everybody lined up, you know, getting married. And, and it, was, it was just him and me. And, and, and I didn't have any flowers. I thought it was on, well, it was Easter. It was like Easter weekend, you know? And so I thought I could get flowers at this really great flower shop on the way down there that day, but they were closed. And I was like, well, that's the one thing I guess I really wish I had was, was flowers and I was sad. But the coffee shop down there by the city hall was open that we really like. And I was like, they have flowers, they have flowers. So I went in and I was like, could I have some of your flowers? I'm getting married. <laughs> and they were like, and I thought they'd be really excited. Like, oh, you're getting married. Oh, what do you need? Yeah, do you want a cup of coffee, it's coffee cake, you know? And they were just like, uh, yeah, sure. Take some flowers. I was like, thank you so much. So I took some flowers and I was like, thank you so much. And I, when I met him, I was wearing that red sweater and, and the sneakers that I have on my feet in, in the day I got married. And I, I just never looked back. And it was just so wonderful. And when we were in there um, talking to, this is my love, uh, when we were in there at the dentist, looking at him at the dentist. Um, <laughs> so, oh no, I've got, no one should marry in Van Nuys. <laughs> Kenny. Um, sorry, sorry. Uh, I'm going to hide the chat just so you can see how ridiculous and wonderful he is. Um, he's yeah, in the dentist. Uh, and, and, and I, I mean, I, I just, uh, couldn't believe it that the, the judge was like, you really care about each other. I was like, yeah, 
I was like, D doesn't everyone? He's like, mm. <laughs> I was like, doesn't everyone who come in he comes in here, you know, feel that way? And he's like, mm. um, and so anyway, yeah, that's that's all. That's that's the time I wanted to take about it. But I mean, I just I don't know. I wanted to share it because tomorrow's our anniversary, and that only comes once a year. And we've had we've got three years, and I just can't wait to have three more. Tell tell you how we met. Oh, I really want to. I really want to tell you. I mean. Let me let me do the first section of the show that's quilt related because you never know. Some people might be like, what's happening? Um, and they might be sad about it. And I don't want them to be sad about it. I do want to tell you the story. You know what? How about this? At the end, at the end of the show, um, once we I share the wonderful quilt things I have, to, I'll, 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 sh I'll tell you the full story. And it is amazing. But if you have to go, you know, if you can't stick around or you're like, ah, I think I'm good. Uh, listen to it on the replay. Um, totally fine. But uh, but this is a show about quilts. <sighs> Damn it. And we're gonna we'll we'll go on. But yeah. So tell I will. So at the, yeah. Okay. At the end. At the end. So so here we go. This quilt I brought up um, a while ago. Uh, I mean, um, uh, some weeks ago. In fact, I was wearing this hoodie uh, when I talked about it. I know because there's a, a brief bit of that show and this quilt in the Quilt Nerd trailer um, that I put up on YouTube and here on the channel, which you can share liberally if you so choose. So this quilt wowed everyone, obviously. This quilt is, I mean, it's just like, a, a, there's there are no words to describe how cool this is. I mean, maybe some of you aren't aren't fond of it. Um, I doubt that. Just knowing you and knowing you know this this group of people. Hey, Sonia, um, quilts in space. Yeah, exactly. And and so we looked at this briefly, and uh, Molly in particular was like, "Oh my god!" And this quilt. Hang on now. I gotta grab one other thing. Hang on. It's right here. Um, this quilt was <clears throat> mentioned in relation to something, but, but, but today I'm going to talk more about its maker because more about this quilt and its maker, because I hit pay dirt today by accident. It's always how it happens. You know, I'm looking for one thing. I find something else. And then that's why this show will just go on and on because there's always so much to discover and, and talk about. So, so this quilt says made and presented to ECH by Grandma Carpenter, 1892. And yes, oh good, good, great. It's one of your favorites, Stephanie? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Warden Bernard posted extra about her in the episode discussion channel. Good, well, <laughs> get ready for this. So I'm looking for something else. And I'm in this, I'm in this book, okay? I'm in this book and there's an affiliate code for this book. Um, this book was published by Schiffer um, in, hold on. Um, it was published in 2000 by Schiffer Publishing. And good old Schiffer, we love Schiffer. And it was written by Patricia T. Herr. And it's really, I mean, it's, it's hard to say, like, I mean, I've got the book obviously here and, and I have to be careful about how much, you know, of the book that I read to you from any, uh, from, from show to show, because there's so much in some of these books. I don't want to, I don't want to do it all at once. You know, I want to, you know, spread it out. And, um, in this book, I found a section, uh, on Grandma Carpenter, the woman who made this quilt. Uh, and I was very excited <laughs> because I wanted to know more about her. And I had seen one other quilt that looked like one, it looked like this quilt, which you'll see in just a second. Sorry, I'm just doing this. Um, but I didn't know anything more about this person. Um, and so we're gonna, I'm gonna, I scanned everything in uh, the section about Grandma Carpenter, and I'm gonna show you what I found at, from this book by Patricia T. Her, and we are in her debt. Um, um, hold on. And here is the um, 
the affiliate link. Hang on one second. If you want to buy this book from Abe Books, I'm an Abe Book affiliate. And uh, I don't know, it's just fun. I really love it. It's kind of like an obsession now. And every, anytime I mention a book on the show, I'm like giving you a link. Um, quilting tradish, traditions. Should be quiltner.link slash quilting traditions. Okay. Wow. So here is how it starts. And I'm, I photocopied all of this so I could read to you. what Patricia has to say about this person, okay? So settle in, because this is like really, really interesting. And just so you know, hold on, hold on. Just so you know, you, do you remember, do you remember? Do you remember this? Do you remember that? We've looked at this quilt and that's coming up. That's by the same book. Yeah, okay, so. Somebody's ripping out seams. You keep, uh, you keep ripping. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Grandma Carpenter, all right, by Ms. Uh, Her. Harriet Miller Carpenter, another Mennonite uh, grandmother. Okay, she was talking about another another Mennonite woman uh, in the previous section. Um, was doing uh, was making quilts for her grandchildren. A genealogical chart of Harriet and Uriah Carpenter's family. And she has a chart, which I didn't copy because it's, you know, sort of genealogically not. I mean, it's this, you know, I was like, OK. Um, notes the descendants who received quilts. Um, so present research indicates that Harriet made at least 20 quilts. The locations of 19 of them are known. Oh. Harriet, with the help of her husband, Uriah, was undoubtedly the most innovative Lancaster County quilt maker yet known. A page from the Carpenter Bible, which is what you're looking at now. Hang on, make sure that's true. Yeah, a page from the, mm -hmm, the Carpenter Bible reflects their family history. It records the birth of Uriah in 1825, reflects their family uh, and the births of Harriet and Uriah's children, Sumpter, Wayne, and Mary Frances. <clears throat> Fracture writing and printed family records were the traditional ways Pennsylvania Germans recorded important family events. Quilts did sometimes serve a purpose similar to the Carpenter family Bible record. Um, those made by grandma's, uh, okay, da, da, da. those made by grandma's Geeman, which is the other one, and Carpenter, and the ones illustrated in chapter three do more than record. They have, the, they have the added dimension of being useful everyday objects, presentation pieces with a more personal contact involvement in the receiver's life. A photograph of Harriet was, t uh, was taken about 1902, two years after Uriah died. Hang on. Wait, nope. Hang on, that's the one I had. It's this one. She's in the photo. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, I just skipped ahead. It's kind of a, it's, the picture is kind of haunted. Um, you bought that book. Molly, this one, I mean, I say that every time. Y'all, it's like, this book, you gotta get this one. There are a few that like, oof, this is really good. Um, a photograph of Harriet, it's this one, was taken about 1902, two years after Uriah died. Yeah, it's a little bit haunted, but it's fine. Pictured with her in front of her home in Warwick Township is her grandson, Alan, Alan, Alan Burke Holder Carpenter, for whom she made a rising sun crib quilt, which we will see. Uh, Harriet and Uriah lived and raised their family on a farm called Pine Hill. When they grew older, they built this smaller home on a portion of the land and let the younger generation take over the main house. It is here that Harriet and Uriah made quilts for their grandchildren. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, you ready? Buckle up. Just buckle up. Just get ready for this. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Linda, hey, Linda. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the chat on the screen just a little smaller. I don't wanna get rid of it because I want everybody's I want everybody's like astonishment to read forever. Okay. According to family tradition, the map of Pennsylvania and map of the United States quilt, that's next, were graphed out by husband Uriah as a teaching aid for grandson 
Willem Cullen Carpenter. Harriet then made these designs into full-sized quilts. She documented the map of Pennsylvania with the embroidered phrase, made and presented by Grandma Carpenter, age 75, along the lower border of the quilt. Look at this. It's so cool. Look at that. Ah. You see above my head? Made and presented to William Cullen, Car Cullen Carpenter, right? Because it was, it was graphed out by husband Uriah and, um, and grandma for their grandson, William Cullen Carpenter, as a teaching aid so he would learn the counties in Pennsylvania. I mean, seriously. Hey, Goofmeister. I'm so glad that you're subscribed. You subscribed for four months. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. That's awesome. I mean, where else can you get this content? It's pretty good. I mean, I'm reading from a book of great content, but I did bring it to you. <laughs> Without me, would you have found it? Okay, so um, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. So, um, okay, made and presented. Mm -hmm. um, she added large embellished initials. Uh, yes, yes, she did. Oh, look at how 1906 is done, almost like a cabaret style. Felt like sweets. Love the HST on the bottom right corner. Yep, same. Whoop, hold on. <laughs> I gotta show it where it's not. Yes, it's just above my head. Um, okay, Lucky Grandson William also received a star pattern crib quilt, which we will also see in a minute, from Grandma Carpenter in 1907. Harriet also made, by the way, do we have, an, do we have a Harriet number two? Harriet Powers? Harriet Carpenter. Personally, meh, meh, she's pretty good. Harriet uh, made, uh, da, 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 da. oh yeah, Lucky Grandson Wilson also, William also received a star pattern crib quilt from Grandma Carpenter in 1907. And Harriet made two more map of Pennsylvania quilts for grandchildren, Beta Burkholder Carpenter in 1900 and Howard Carpenter Hess in 1902. She's like, I don't pick favorites. I'm gonna make a brilliant thing for all three of you beautiful children. An unmarked star crib quilt was also made for Howard Carpenter Hess. I mean, you need creepy music. We got that. We got that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The initials, they're amazing. Okay, well, so that's, uh, and look at this Lake Erie. Hold on, hold on. Lake Erie up there in New York, you know? I mean, yeah, okay. So it's Pennsylvania, okay? Well, look at that, United States. <laughs> I'm gonna keep zooming in and keep reading and hopefully they are going to match. Oh, look at, oh wow, look at up at the top, Dominion of Canada, Dominion of Canada. Wow, okay. Um, earlier, Carpenter had made another crib quilt for her first great granddaughter, Mabel Bryant. Not shy about her age, Harriet stitched, made and presented to great grandchild by grandmother Carpenter or grandma Carpenter, age 73. 1905. Okay, that's figure 107. We gotta look. We gotta look at it. Hang on, hang on. Figure 107. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready? You're not ready. You ain't ready. That is the crib quilt. It's a crib quilt. It's 52 by 44 inches. Now, I scanned this from the book and that it was real close to the gutter. You know this happens sometimes where I'm scanning the quilt and it's just so close to the gutter. So, so that mark you see on the side of the quilt is just the, the lovely gloss on the page. This book is great because it's very, the, the color is great. The, the pages are glossy and nice, um, but I couldn't get it flat enough without fully ruining the spine of the book. Um, so that's what's going on there, but that doesn't happen when you look at the book yourself. So this is a crib quilt, okay, yep. Yeah. And this is the one where she's got down here at the bottom, what we just read that she says, made and presented to great grandchild by Grandma Carpenter, age 73, 1915. You know, isn't that cool? What does right half of Oklahoma say? Okay, hang on, Miss Eleni. Right half of Oklahoma, hang on. Right half of Oklahoma. Okay, we'll have to go back because I've got a photocopy, but it, it doesn't look good on my side. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> Judging from a surviving example of Harriet's crude signature, she probably did not design the complicated calligraphy used in the lettering of her quilts. Interesting. Perhaps the patterns were created by husband Uriah or another talented calligrapher living in the Littitz area. Hmm. 
in Lancaster County. Information passed down in the family clearly indicates that Harriet always applied the embroidery herself, but she did allow other friends to take part in the quilting as long as she felt they were expert quilters. Mm -hmm. That's right. Most of Hut Harriet's other quilts. Okay, okay, I'll look though. Um, most of Harriet's other quilts bear similar signatures addressed. Look at that one. To various grandchildren. The use of large decorative embroidered initials located prominently on the top surface is seen on a small subgroup. See, look, made and presented to WCC. It's that little boy again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, a subset of sawtooth diamond patterns. Interesting. I didn't want to use the book because it's so heavy, and so I made these photocopies, but I don't know. I'm learning. I'm learning different methods. Um, a sawtooth diamond pattern uh, quilts made by other Pennsylvania German women around 1900 in the Hammer Creek area of Warwick and Elizabeth Townships. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. The quilting on Harriet Carpenter's bed coverings is outstanding. Let's look at another one. Oh, look at that. Although the quilting pattern in the central area of her Heavens quilt, which I think this one is. Mm -hmm, hang on. Okay. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, bigger one. Okay, here. Okay, occasionally, Grandma Carpenter even stitched the pattern name of her quilt into her presentation note. The Rising Sun. Oh, Harriet is Molly's favorite quilter, period. Okay, so the Rising Sun, this is what this quilt is called. The Rising Sun was made for grandson Alan Burkholder Carpenter. And the Bride's Puzzle which is this one. We're gonna go back to the Rising Sun one because we're not done there. Um, the Bride's Puzzle for Grandson Miles Burkholder Carpenter. A quilt pattern may have, <laughs> may have names depending on the family or region of the country from which it originates. Uh, yeah, finding a quilt name applied by the maker as part of the quilt is an unusual occurrence and leaves no doubt as to what name the maker gave to her pattern. Um, wow. I mean, there's so much, like, there's so much about these different quilts. I mean, I, I, I'm sort of shocked almost because, like, there's a lot known about each of these quilts, but of course there is because, you know, she was labeling them and she was putting her name on. Look at the quilting on this. I'm just going to pause now from the reading and just, like, sit with you and look at these a little bit. Um, so yeah, so this is Rising Sun and it was made in 19... 19. <laughs> I was so slick. I was like, look at this. I've got both of my pages on one page and, you know, it's a nightmare. Okay, uh, Rising Sun quilt pattern. Um, the name uh, of the pattern is embroidered along the bottom edge with Harriet's presentation comments, Rising Sun, 1901, made and presented to ABC by Grandma Carpenter. Okay, here we have it. Look at that. Wow. I'm going to bring it up a little bit, a little bit higher. Um, okay, and actually, I'm going to make myself go away so you can see this without a problem. Wow. Um, ABC, grandson Alan Burkholder Carpenter, was 10 years old at the time. Harriet Carpenter, uh, she writes her name, Harriet Carpenter, 1831. Wait a minute. No, no, no. Harriet Carpenter. Uh, by Grandma Carpenter. Okay, yeah. Pieced top with cotton outline and other decorative stitches, cotton batting, cotton back, 75 by 76. Collection of Harriet Carpenter Faison. So it's still in the family, I guess. I mean, God, look at that embroidery. It's so cool. Yeah, the triangle quilting. Yes, Robin's Nest. Totally. A needle and thread never left her hand. Mm, I love that, Dee Marie. <laughs> Jill, totally. I thought of that too, rising sun in the back of my mind. I mean, look at that feather. Look at this feather stuff. This is just so good. Beyond words good. You know, who, you know who this reminds me of a little bit? Let's talk about the red sewing, Karen. Yes, let's do talk about the red. Red is definitely 
yeah, yeah, she goes there, right? Doesn't she? Doesn't she go there? Um, she reminds me a little bit of Bertha Mextroth, you know, just in terms of this, this artistry. Oh, look at that red again. You know what, Karen? You are so right. You are so right. It's just a very good observation. Like I, I was sort of absorbing all of that red, but, but you actually articulated it and it's like, yeah, <laughs> look at all the red in these quilts, you know? And, and yeah, so she was Mennonite. Yeah, Mennonite. That's what we have learned. Okay, hang on. So, but we're not done. There's other quilts. I haven't even shown you all of them yet. Um, we're getting there, but there's this pretty special one that we don't want to miss. So this is called the bride's puzzle. This is the bride's puzzle. And she says, I mean, this is crazy that she actually says the name of the pattern. Look at that bride's puzzle made and presented to NBC. So, so, and then 1901 by grandma carpenter. I mean, it's just, they're, they are exquisite works of art, period, period. You know, Twilight Zone music. Oh wait. Just thinking the same thing, Myra. That French blue is gorgeous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Twilight Zone music. Hey, I don't even need to ask. If you people say it's time for Twilight Zone music, you're gonna get it. You're gonna get it. Bride's Puzzle Quilt Needlework Presentation on Bottom Border. NBC was Miles Burkholder Carpenter, who was seven years old when she received the quilt. Miles was a little girl. Love it. Love that. Harriet Carpenter, uh, Warwick Township. Uh, yes, okay, she was born in 1831 and she passed in 1915, by the way. Pieced top with cotton outline and other decorative stitches, cotton batting, cotton back, 76 by 74. Collection of Sarah and Miles Chip Carpenter. Wait a minute. No, Miles is a, is a boy. This is a typo because Miles Burkholder Carpenter was seven years old when she received the quilt. Oh, and it actually says when she received quilt. So I think that's a mistake. I think that Miles is a, is a male. I mean, I don't know, Sarah and Miles, Chip Carpenter, anyway. So yeah, I mean, what, how, what do you think about this? What do you think about that action? Hmm? What do you think about that? Lillian is getting video ads. You know what, Lily? I'm not like playing any ads. Like I'm not like hitting any buttons, but if you, if you subscribe, you don't have ads, but if you don't subscribe, Twitch plays ads. And I think I can turn them all off, but I'm not like I'm able to turn them all off, but I choose to not turn them all off. I don't know how many you're getting because I haven't been on that side of things, but yeah, ads happen. I, but you know what? I should ask Eric. Well, I don't know. Let me know how many ads there are. Okay. Cause I really don't know. And if there's a ton, like, Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm still learning Twitch. Um, but if you subscribe, you don't have to watch ads. And you can get a free Amazon, a free uh, subscription to Twitch through your Amazon Prime membership because you get a free Twitch subscription every month through Amazon Prime. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, four in a row, really? Hmm. I'm writing it in my notes. Four in a row. Eric, I think you're watching. Can we look at ads? Can we look at that? Ads. Four in a row. See my notes? Padma. Padma, hold on, hold on. Padma, dog howling for racy. Ads, four in a row. <laughs> it has been recorded. Um, okay, so, so, Molly's gonna quit her job and, and quilt like Harriet. <laughs> ads tell sewing Karen, it's time to get your son to help you subscribe. I like that. I like that idea. I'm giving away a quilt at 200 subs. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I just think this is like sublime. It's perfect. And, and this, this purple in the corner, what, I mean, who, oh, if, if times were different, she made this in 1901, you know, if times were different, like she, and I don't want her to be anything that she, I want her, I want Harriet Carpenter to be exactly who she was. I don't see her as having a lack. I don't see any quilt makers at this time being, uh, it being a sad or sorry case that they couldn't go to art school and be artists. They were artists. She is, she made art. This is exquisite. And so is this. And like, there's no, look at that down at the bottom. I just can't. And then, and then, you know, don't forget about this one. And so 
so when I say, look at, look at the star shower across this quilt through the center, like the diagonal. I mean, really? <laughs> really, Harriet? Really? Um, so when I say, like, if she had been born in a different time, she would be, I don't know, she would be a wealthy woman, you know, making, making art for a different world, I guess. And that's, now that I even said it, I, I don't want that for her. I don't want that for any quilt maker to, to sort of be like, looked, looked, uh, looked at with pity somehow. But I've heard it before, and, and I, I have to admit, I've probably said it before, you know, where it's like, oh, you know, if this woman who made this quilt had been born in a different time, she would have been an astronaut. You know, she was so smart, obviously such a great engineer. She would have been at the top of her field in some field, but, uh, but I don't know. I want everyone to be fulfilled and no matter what era they live in. So that's true. But what's also true is that, you know, I'm glad Harriet Carpenter made quilts. You know, I'm real glad she made quilts. Here's one more. And then the final, the final analysis. Um, this one, I mean, what did I say? I was like, I didn't know that she made so many quilts that we had so many quilts of hers. So I hit, I find this book and I'm like, all my other plans went out the window. So this is a flag quilt. There's this one and one more, and then we go to the next thing. Um, flag quilt with extraordinary decorative details. Made and presented, here's what she says about this one. Made and presented, UBC. That, that one says UBC, Grandma Carpenter, 1898. Includes date 1777, Union Forever, with E pluribus unum, metallic cord and stitching and stuffed work flagpoles, all added by Harriet for grandson Uriah Burkholder Carpenter, who received the quilt when he was 12 years old. Applique pieced and stuffed work, cotton outline and other decorative stitches and metallic cord, cotton batting and cotton back, 88 inches square. Collection of Mary Jo Scott, interesting. It's stuffed. High quality, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Felt like Sweets asked if there was one purple HST out of place on the bride's puzzle. You know what? I think there was. And I, like, I registered that and then went on. But I think it was. And so we're going to look at um, the Oklahoma for miscellany, and we're going to look at that triangle for you. And the date on the last one, do you mean... Do you mean this one, Padma? Oops, this one? Oh yeah, okay, and the out of place, yes. Yes, there is, look, out of place, sorry. I just, I'm gonna go back to the flag in just a second. Yes, felt like sweets. You found it, it's right up here in the corner. It's turned a different way. It's turned a different way. Raffle, incredible, I know, right? The Astro one, okay, hang on one second. Um, the date on, oh, on the, on the, um, the star, the star shine one is, I'm like licking my fingers tonight. It's bad, it's bad, but I wash my hands a lot. Okay. <laughs> um, the star shine quilt is 1892, 1892. Okay, and we're, I have one other thing to read about that quilt. I started with it and we're gonna end with it too. Now here's a question. Um, the quilting is amazing. Close up on the bird, is that an eagle? Let's see, oh yeah, it surely, surely is. Let me get it out from under the chat here. Look at that. Incredible, incredible. Yeah. Um, there's something else I can read you about the flag quilt too. So funny, okay. Mm -hmm. It's great. Um, let's see, the da 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 da. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, this Mennonite thing is interesting, right? This, this, because the Amish aesthetic of, you know, plain, you know, and then, you know, fancy quilting and, you know, simpler patchwork, you know, the Mennonite uh, way of life is different. But I mean, it's interesting. This says, this is what it says, uh, where it says union forever. Look at her quilting. It's bananas. It's, it's so good. It just sort of like, 
it just looks like it's been stamped somehow, you know, stamped with this beautiful texture and these beautiful shapes somehow. It's just, it's just exquisite. Um, but the, the, the embroidery is just ornate, you know, it looks so very, it's curly cues and it's, um, serifs and all of that. And I do think butterflies, I do think it, yeah, <laughs> I do think it's butterflies. Oh yeah, yeah, Padma, yes, exactly. I think what I've got to read to you about that, that quilt uh, mentions that, I think so. And yeah, and all of the flagpoles are stuffed. It's stuffed work, pretty, pretty amazing. Okay, um, so let's see. Here we go. Okay, and then this is the last one, and then we'll, I'll read you what I have have about the um, that star shine quilt. I call it star shine, but uh, this, by the way, is um, a picture of Harriet, I believe. Let me make sure. <laughs> um, and I think I don't know, like like. This particular person is one of those that when we've talked about the 12 quilters book, and it's still on the radar, believe me, it's still on the radar. No, this is not Harriet. I'll read, read you who this is. Um, she's a contender. I think Harriet Carpenter is a contender for like a book of 12 quilt, quilt makers that people should know about, you know, like we've cooked up that idea before and it's still, it's still bouncing around. Uh, this is a, a picture of Susan, Fry, Susan, yeah, Susan Fry Shank Habaker. Um, and she, oh, okay, okay, we're made by Susan. Okay, okay, okay. So this one, hang on. Interesting, interesting. Interesting, okay, okay, so hold on, so pause. Let me go to this. I'm gonna read you this and grab something else, okay. So from this book, hey Threadist, I'm kind of bouncing around. I, I, I did, I, my favorite thing to do now that I'm here at the office space is use the scanner and the copier. I went a little crazy today. Okay, so this is from this book, Wild by Design, which I am pretty sure I've shared from before. But I wanna read to you just a little bit about this particular quilt before we say goodbye to, um, to Harriet. There's one other quilt I'll show you right after the break. But um, so yeah, so this one was made by Harriet Miller Carpenter in 1892. It's 94 and a half by 85. And it's kept at the International Quilt Museum. So uh, Jonathan Holstein, uh, says, this quilter approached her work as if it were a canvas for painting rather than a setting for repetitive pattern. She's ambitious, trying to put the cosmos on her canvas. Um, and this, and then Holstein continues, uh, they're having a conversation, Pat Cruz and um, Janet uh, Burlow, the writers of the book, and, and then Holstein says, uh, this kind of drawing and conceptions, fanciful, often asymmetrical, bold, strong colors, had been part of the Pennsylvania folk art tradition since the 18th century. You can see it in this quilt, in the moon and the shooting star above it, and the composition that draws so many disparate elements, including a visually difficult calli calligraphic center into a coherent, lively, and successful composition. Of course, we don't know for sure what Harriet and Uriah Carpenter's actual influences were, but this quilt and their others fall into that group of eccentric, unique pictorial quilts whose makers were often motivated by a felt need to preserve history, to pass on family and cultural information through symbolic and stylized representation. And we forget what the night sky looked like to 19th century Americans, especially those who lived in the country. It was a brilliant, commanding presence, something we've lost with modern light pollution. Celestial events such as meteor showers were important, often given spiritual significance. We should keep in mind that when we see quilt makers such as Harriet Carpenter or Harriet Powers, for example, we were, uh, they were visually recording celestial events. Oh, <laughs> so that's, that's some good stuff. Hey, thanks, Raffle. 
Um, Sonia says, beautiful stars and quilting blown away and so much texture on that purple block. I'd love to see it in person. See, pretty feathers. Jay Dancer, I'm sewing as I watch and feeling like compared to her amazing quilting, my work looks like I have 10 thumbs. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's true for you, but I mean, it is tough. You know what? I will say that like when you see quilts like this and I'm all for, you know, I mean, this is a show where we celebrate, you know, creativity and, and being yourself and eschewing the over commercialization of the quilt industry, which I grew up in and was a part of, you know, and 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 everything's all the quilt system parts are important. But, you know, I'm really, you know, we, we keep quilts weird. That's our little hashtag, you know, keep quilts weird. And this quilt's weird, but it's really, really good. <laughs> you know, it's like really, really like, oh, man, like, the, I mean, look at the grid quilting in the in the middle part. You know, it's just it's it's perfect. OK. And then you have these like lotus blossom blossoms in the vine, you know, quilting on the border. The orange is exactly what it should be. The pink is exactly what it needs to be. <laughs> And I've seen this quilt printed in a number of different publications. I think, I mean, I don't know. This seems to be a pretty good, I mean, the book is, is the color looks good in the book. I've never seen the quilt in person. And like I said, I've seen this quilt printed several times and the color has been different. But this and the copy, the, the picture that the International Quilt Museum has seem to be similar. I mean, the navy and the orange and the pink. And then the golden and floss. I mean, come on, like, come on. And, 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 like, it's weird, it's unusual, it's fabulous. Oh, palms, mmm, I like that. That's, that's a very good, very good point. Um, yeah, exactly, Raffle. So, so it's weird and it's, it's creative and, but yeah, just, just that, the fact that she's Grandma Carpenter, you know, it's not like by Molly Smith. No, it's for you, my grandchild. This is for you, and I'm putting your initials on it. And your initials are the center point of focus. And there's a star shower, a comet, you know, for you. And, and your name is, you are so important. I'm going to embroider these beautiful things around your initials. And, and it's for me, Grandma Carpenter, and here's the year. I mean, it's like, ugh. So my weird quilts are my favorite quilts I've ever made. They do not look like this. That's okay. That's okay. Um, there's one thing. I mean, look at these things. One thing. Oklahoma. Oh, well. Miscellany, indeed. What did you spy? What is that? What does that mean? I need uh, historians and American history people. Yeah, <laughs> Padma, exactly. No coat was, no, no uh, quilts were harmed in the making of well, yeah, that quilt is intact, and we're really glad. Indeed. Um, quilty mouse, I thought the small stars were just dots, but they have points. Uh. Um, so what's this about? This was made, we know, because, hold on. I, I feel like someone's going to say what it is, and I feel very dumb that I didn't immediately know. But Oklahoma is split into two parts. Oklahoma and Indian Territory, wow. Is that what it was called? Indian territory. I mean, yeah. I mean, it. it I think it's hard to tell in this particular image. It's about as high res as it gets. Uh, really interesting Indian territory, and that's what they called it. Oh boy. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, I I missed it. I missed it. Miscellany. Very very well done. Good eye. What else is weird in here? Probably a lot. Um, Dominion of Canada. I caught that one. 44 million acres. Wow. Indian tear. Lillian says it's probably Indian T-E-R. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oregon was probably the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This has Oregon, uh, Oregon intact. But anyway. So that is our friend. Uh, Harriet Carpenter. And I think, you know what I'm going to do? We have a Harriet uh, emote. Hey, Linda. We have a Harriet uh, uh, Powers emote uh, here in the chat. Uh, if you're a subscriber, you get access to all the emotes. 
which is really fun. So I, I got a little aardvark from the Harriet Powers Bible quilt. We don't know if it's an aardvark. I like to think it's an aardvark. And I did my magic on it, and we use the little Harriet emote or emoji in the chat. I don't know. It's kind of a catch-all. We use it with love for various things. I think we need a, I think we need a Harriet emote, a Harriet Carpenter one. And I'm thinking, you know what would be nice? What about that moon? Don't you think that moon ought to be? And I can tilt it so it's a little more upright. What do you think? See, now the comment, I was thinking about that too, but it's awfully long. It's quite a long comment. A very particular pig. I think someone found out that according to Harriet, it was a very particular pig. Very particular pig. I don't know. I don't know what that means, Raffle. I probably missed something in the chat. Oh, yeah, you got it, Miscellany. I try to keep track of things. Sometimes I say something and I forget. But most of the time, even though I kind of bounce around, I do I do have in the back of my mind, you know, I, I make tabs, you know. I really like... I really like tabs and I have them mentally. Oh, a specific pig. Oh yeah, okay. Now, so yeah, so we'll, maybe we could do a poll <laughs> about um, whether we want the moon or the comet. I mean, the comet's pretty long and skinny, but it could, it could happen. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do, everybody. I am going to take a quick break and then we are going to come back and talk about Fran Soika. Oh, Fran Soika. I've been wanting to talk about her for a while and I didn't, I mean, she's so amazing and Harriet was so amazing that it's almost like, is this an embarrassment of riches? But the thing is about quilts and people who make them, they're just amazing. They're amazing. What are you going to do? You're going to like slow down the flood of awesomeness when you're talking about artists and quilt makers and it, from, from the 19th century or the 20th century or the 21st century? There's no waiting. There's no holding back. It's impossible. So we'll be right back. Oh, yeah, Charles felt like sweets. The moon looks good. I think I'm going to have to do the moon. Oh, specific. Okay. Okay. So, so we'll be right back and don't go anywhere. You're going to love Fran Soika a lot. So I will see you shortly. Okay. BRB. <laughs>
how's it going? What? What's behind me? It's a rainbow. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, so, okay. Of all the pictures I had for you, this was the last one from the Harriet Carpenter uh, section. But as I was flipping through my, uh, my stuff here, <laughs> um, so uh, I was flipping through and I got a bit confused and I didn't want to read you the wrong thing. I mean, sometimes it takes me a minute to find the thing that I'm reading for you, but, uh, but I'd rather take time and find it and read the correct thing than like be like, Bleh, you know. So as I was flipping, I mean, this is, I can't not show you this one, right? But I was a little confused because this quilt says, Let's see, let's get that chat up there. Um, this quilt, so, so here's what it says about this from, 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 uh, from the book, um, Stitching Traditions. The quilting patterns on Harriet's rainbow quilts, figure 109. So this is figure 109, but it's a little confusing because made and presented to CSH. By Mother Habaker. I mean, I, I'm not sure what's going on here because I think this this seems like the wrong. No, that's right. I don't know. I mean, I, hmm. OK, here's the deal. There are uh, there are several versions of this quilt because. Because Grandma Carpenter made one, but then also someone okay yeah 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 okay so this one sorry this one is this one was made by susan habaker okay and susan habaker was in the area i mean it's it's just it's a bit confusing because she she did it sort of in the style of harriet carpenter anyway I'm working on it. Okay, I'm working on it. it. It's not a copycat, Lillian. Like I think, because here's the other the other part of all this, the other um, piece of this, is that this is a quilt. This is the same the same quilt. Okay, the same pattern. I'll show you. This quilt is kept at the International Quilt Museum. Okay, so this is a, a really cool exhibit that they had. Uh, years ago called a rare occurrence and it was commemorating the first total eclipse in Lincoln, Nebraska's recorded history. And so they had on, on display, wouldn't it be cool to see these quilts, right? Well, the International Quilt Museum in Lincoln, Nebraska is the owner of and they own these quilts. And so, so you see here, here is this quilt as well, but it's, it's a different version. And you know, she made, uh, Carpenter made different you know, she made for her grandchildren sometimes, you know, the same quilt, but, but for them. And so, whoops, so this one, you know, says MMB 1892. Okay, but then, you know, the other quilt we just looked at was this one. Sorry. Which says, you know, made and presented to CSH by Mother Habaker. So uh, to be honest with you, you know, I don't know kind of what what we're looking at here. And I think, I mean, the book obviously is going to tell us more, but it's a bit confusing. I mean, it, it kind of runs out, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's past my like deep knowledge of, of this person and how these other quilts were made. Sorry, let me get out of here. Um, so, but I wanted to show you that last quilt because it's so amazing. Um, Lord. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Sorry. There's a lot of there's a lot going on tonight. There really is a lot going on. Um, but yeah, you get really cool exhibits at the Quilt Museum. So if you're ever in the area, you should really, really try to go and see quilts there because there's always something amazing happening. But isn't that great? I mean, look at the colors on this thing. Made and presented to CSH by Mother Hebaker, 1891. Jade Inster says, they say the calligraphy of those fancy letters wasn't the original quilter. She got someone else to design it. Interesting. Maybe Harriet did the embroidery, Raffle Waffle says. There's some book that has connected the two quilts, you know, and there's a third one too. Yeah, that's the thing, Stephanie Cake, is that there, there, there is. I mean, this, and that's interesting. It's like, were they all 
people who were connected somehow. I mean, you know, this this girl who made the woman who made this one, Ms. Habaker, Susan Fry Shank Habaker, was brought up as a Mennonite and joined the Church of the Brethren upon marriage. You know, and so you know, it's a it's a, a tight knit community in Lancaster County. But and I don't think it would be that they were I mean, it's so obviously a copy of this really cool design. It's really like any other quilt that someone would make, a quilt block, right? That they would make and then someone else would say, Oh, I love it. I'm gonna use it too. But it's just very, very interesting. Now Stephanie Cake says, I wish I could remember what book. I have it somewhere on my shelf. Oh, but I think they determined they were neighbors or something. You know what? Stephanie Cake, you gotta you gotta you think about that. Um I read about the collect calligraphy earlier. But didn't, but did they, did they say who did it, the calligraphy? Didn't they say like they got some calligrapher, you know, probably to design, to, to design the stuff? Oh man, you know what? I'll never do again what I did, which was print on oversized paper. This was a crack up. This was such a crack up. You know, experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. <laughs> what I wanted was a smooth ride. But this is the book, once again, that I got this um, information from and all those wonderful pictures. And Molly went for it. She ordered it. And tell your husband, it's my fault. I know there are spouses and different people who have bought lots of books on this, uh, on this show, but they're all used. You're helping independent booksellers and you're beefing up your quilt. Um, library and that's a good thing okay so right before we do the Francoica Francis or Francoica um let's do this quiz really quick Shank and Shank are very common Mennonite last names so that they will so so so, so much that they will often assume the a or the e and spell it wrong really Jan makes stuff. Just think of the confusion there will be in a hundred years. <laughs> so much access. Yes, we will have to patterns and maybe not so good at labeling. I mean, I think, I mean, labeling the quilts, like if it was ever important, well, it's always been important, but I think, yeah, I think it's really important. I think it's really important we label our quilts and, 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 you know, if more people had, I, I think it's, you know, it's weird. Like maybe if more people labeled their quilts in the past and if we do now, like maybe it will make quilts worth something more than they are worth now because you know with all the kerfuffle about the quilt clothes thing like my one of the things i've really learned from all of that is that the debate the the debate itself like i think the broader sort of the broader problem is that we don't value quilts enough period like we don't value them enough period because yeah like there are quilts that just you just can't save and like museums don't want them and it doesn't make sense for them to have them but if we but why do we value them so little that they become rags anyway you know like i think it's a it's a more fundamental problem and so and so yeah so if we labeled them if if more people like harriet carpenter wrote their name on the top of the quilt, you know, and the name of the pattern, Rising Sun, 1904, made by Harriet Carpenter at age 75. You know, nobody's cutting that quilt up for lots of reasons, but nobody's cutting it up. So it's not, it's not, you know, the onus is not on the maker to make sure that the thing is never abused or disabused or whatever in the future, you know, but putting our names on our stuff does give it does give it a provenance, does make it more real to people in the future. And so all of the stuff about, about the quilt clothes and things as I've really been fascinated by everything that's happened, um, good and bad, you know, I've, I've thought really that the question is, is bigger than just should you cut up a quilt or not to make a jacket. It's actually deeper than that, you know what I mean? Um, Prairie Susie, I go by the adage, your research is only as good as your research library. Amen. I like that. Echo So, hot tip. I've been getting many of your suggested books from your, li from your library. That's fantastic. I think your librarian is finding it as amusing. I was really switching, like, reading it in third person or being you. Echo So, let me, let me begin again. Echo So, quote. Hot tip, 
I've been getting many of your suggested books from my library. I think my librarian is finding it as amusing as me. That is a fine idea. And you know, there's this A Books affiliate link, but there's also a World Cat number, you know, the World uh, Card Catalog. And, um, you know, that's great too. That's great too. And the library, I mean, I can only get some of the stuff I want to read from the library or through Molly Squared, who can uh, sometimes help me read a scholarly paper that I want to read that I might need to, I might need a librarian for. You know, I might need you to get it for me, Molly. And I have a couple uh, on deck that I'd like to ask you about. Um, Habaker married a carpenter and their son was Uriah Carpenter. Okay. Mm hmm very nerdy. Everyone's very nerdy. Okay. So let's talk about Fran Soika. Well, I want to do that quiz. Okay. We're going to do a quiz really quick because I want to mention AQSG. If, if I can do a quiz, let's just see if I can do it because I got one kind of ready to go, but you know, it's still kind of new. Okay. I think I got it. Let's try it. It's a three question quiz and I you know, it's been on my been on my agenda to do another one. So let's let's try it because it's part of my announcement about AQSG. Okay, April Quilt Nerd Quiz. Let's see if we can do it. I think we're gonna try. Start quiz. Okay, we're gonna start a quiz now. If you've never participated in a quiz on Quilt Nerd before, you're not alone. <laughs> Other people have not. Also, we've done two quizzes ever total, and the first one was a crack up. And the second one was less of a crack up. And I think the thing that we learned, and the mods can help you out if you've never done it before, and the um, just helpful people in the chat can help you out. Um, there is a, <laughs> there is a, an extension. Okay, now don't get scared, but there's like, you know how you go to a website and it's like, we use cookies to track your data and you have to be like, okay, or no. Similar uh, to that is like when I do a quiz on this show, it's wonderful because you get to like click on a button, a button on your screen or your phone. That's amazing. It's magic. Well, you have to help the magic work. So there's like a little a little thing that pops up or a little tab you have to click. And the extension that I use, the program I use for these quizzes is QuizKit. So if you if you can find that little thing, if you haven't found it before, you know, QuizKit is going to ask you if it's OK to like be with you in this quiz adventure and you have to click yes and it's not going to download anything i mean it's gonna there's an extension that will you know take place or take root or something like that but but it's safe and it's fine and it's like it's legit so if you want to participate in the quiz give it a try and if you have already things should be fine for you <laughs> but i don't know <laughs> it's only the third time we've ever done it let's give it a try okay start quiz <sighs> Okay, sending, it says it's sending the rules to players. To view player names, ask viewers to manage access by clicking the quiz kit icon. Okay, mm -hmm. manage access. If you wanna view player names, you have to click the quiz kit icon and manage access. Okay, I can't see that part of your experience, but I'm sure that you will be fine. I'm going to start the game. Okay. I need, I need a quiz, a quiz uh, music. Okay, question one. Who was recently named the new director of the San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles? Was it S.J. Pepper? Our very own S.J. Pepper. Was it Camille Ann Brewer? Now, we talked about this on the show last week, so this isn't just like totally random. Was it Jonathan Holstein or Nancy Bavor? Who was it? Who was recently named the new director of the San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles. If you don't know, that's totally okay. It's just a good reason to, to learn. Oh good, Word and Bird Nerd says, my, my quiz thing has a checkbox that says visible. So what that means is I think when you answer the question and we look at who answered well and how Molly did not, <laughs> just kidding Molly, um, then we will see your actual name. If you don't have that clicked, we might not see your actual name, but this is all a learning experience. Everything's gonna be fine. You know, everyone's doing a great job. Hey, and look at that. <laughs> Two people voted for SJ Pepper. Um, and one person voted for Jonathan Holstein. And I wonder if it was Jonathan Holstein himself who voted for himself, which would be amazing and iconic. Um, two people voted for Nancy Bavor. And you know what? She was the, she's the former 
uh, director of the museum. So you know what? Way to go to you because you have context, okay? But those of you who voted for um, Camille Ann Brewer are correct. Camille Ann Brewer is the new director of the San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles. Oh my God, everybody has, okay. Contestant 17, your name isn't up on the board. We don't know who you are, <laughs> but that's fixable. And otherwise everybody else is up on the board with your name and that's amazing. And by the way, it was you, Myra, it was you. It was you, you're in third place. I'm so glad. And uh, so the reason people have 27,000 points uh, or similar is because you get thousands of points more if you answer really quickly. We figured that out after a while, the last time we did this. <laughs> your score. Oh, your score. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. I don't know. Raffle Waffle, congratulations. Uh... Yeah, that's good. That's good. That works. That works. I need some winter music. Okay, next question. Next question. Okay. Question two. Mary has posted two new blog entries this week. What? What is the name of Mary's blog? She so nerdy? Mary's blog? Yay, Mary's blogging again. Or Paper Girl? Oh, this, this is kind of like out of left field. But the next question is quilt related. Well, this one is quilt related because it's... By association, my blog. Hmm. Some of you read my blog for a very long time and then I took a hiatus and now what, you know? Well, I'm back. Uh, what is the name of my blog? She's so nerdy? Mary's blog? Yay, Mary's blogging again? Or Paper Girl? Hmm. <laughs> Whoa, Raffle was captain of the quiz bowl in high school. You wish you could change your answer, word and bird nerd. Hmm, Padma, I have a blog. I blogged for years, regularly, like 12 years, like every, all the time, every week, many times a week. Not every single day, but like on average, like four times a week. I'm a writer. Before anything else, I'm a writer, and that, well, that will always be true. So reveal the answer. Paper Girl. It's true. Yes, Paper Girl. That's the name of my blog, and you can go to maryfonts.com slash papergirl to read it. It feels so good to write. Like, it feels like I'm slipping into a bath, a nice bubble bath, you know? It feels really good. Hey, Bonnie, Bonnie. <laughs> Jill thinks that my blog should be called She's So Nerdy Mary's Blog. Yay, Mary's Blogging Again, Paper Girl. I think it's, I think it's, it, it's got a nice jingle. It's got a nice ring. Okay, Joe scores. Okay, how do people do? Contestant 27, you were right there. I wonder who that might be. I don't know. Um, we'll never know, contestant 27. But great job, everybody. You got it. And we're going to finish off with the last question and see who's, wait, who's in the lead? Who's in the lead? Raffle is in the lead. Miscellany is neck and neck. Contestant 27, whoever you are. I don't know. Right now it's a dead heat between Raffle and Miscellany. Okay, last question. Myra, listen, it's, it's the pressure. Okay, question three. The American Quilt Study Group has issued a special membership discount code for quilt nerds. What is that code? Is it, uh, is it call a lifeline? Is the, is the code AQSG15? Or is the coupon code, I literally have no idea, but I'm interested, tell me more. Which of those choices is the coupon code for $15 off a membership to AQSG? What could it be? I don't know, what's the code? What is the code for that special, special deal that's only for quilt nerd uh, people? Kitty Hannah's here. Late, you're late, but you're here, which means the party started. Okay, we're having fun tonight. I, I mean, I, I do feel like my, my, uh, my um, integration of the announcement about the discounted membership for AQSG and the quiz is, it's a new level of quizzing. I mean, come on. Okay, the answer is, Oh, yeah. Oh, Jill. Well, hmm. um, I'll tell you about that in just a minute. But uh, okay, so so who got it right? <laughs> Two of you were like, uh, uh, and one of you went with the silly answer and 23 of you got it right. AQSG15. So if you, I want people to write things about quilts and I want you to research things about quilts and I want to be a bit I mean you don't ever have to do those things to be interested in quilt history and culture and watch this show and you can just sew and rip out seams while you're watching this or you can just like tune in because you need company like all of that stuff is completely cool 
and I want you to be part of the quilt museum. I, I want you to be members, you know, a, a member of the quilt museum in Lincoln. And I want, you know, I want all those things. But what I think about AQSG, it's really important that, you know, you're putting your like nerd brain to use in this particular way that contributes to the literature of all of this. You know what I'm saying? Like go see the exhibits, go to the quilt shows, go and attend these things and go see, you know, Harriet Carpenter's quilts at the Quilt Museum. Amazing. But so much of this show is this stuff. It's the books. It's the books. It's the writing. It's the blogging. It's like all of the stuff down on paper. And so making. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. Okay. That's true. Robin's Nest. <laughs> the code is QuiltNerd15. Okay. Well, I got that wrong. Damn. I was so, oh God, it was so good. It was like so, yeah, that's wrong. The code, the code, if you want $15 off of a friend membership, I can't believe that. Everything else worked. Um, if you want, if you want a, a friend membership for a year to AQSG, instead of $75, if you use the code QuiltNerd15, damn it, you get, um, $15 off, you get a $60 membership, a $75 membership for 60 bucks. And, and thank you, mod, <laughs> God. Um, no, no, you, you, it's, it's the right. Thank you, Padma. God. But you, we have to write this stuff down and, and, and reading it is important and, and subscribing to, you know, or being a member of AQSG. So you get uncoverings journal. It's like, it's really, it's important stuff. And so, so that's why, <laughs> Thanks, Biff. That's why I wanted to do this promotion. And they've never done a coupon code before, but they're doing it now for us. And so I think like 15 people have joined, which is amazing. It's amazing. So, okay. Fran Soika. All right. So some years ago, thank you, everybody. That was really fun. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. That's good. Um, so some years ago, I saw this quilt. And I, I don't know where, but it was so cool. And I thought, I want to know about this quilt because it's obviously, to me, it seemed kind of obviously like Henri Matisse, you know, exactly. Um, you know, it looked like a Matisse painting, but it was, it was a quilt and it, and the person who made the quilt, um, and this is the only picture I have of it. I've never seen another picture. Uh, the name associated with it was Fran Soika. S O I K. Hold on. Fran. Whoops. I'm still in all caps. Fran Soika. S O I K. -A. Yeah. Fran Soika. And um, wow. I mean, I just, I couldn't believe it. And, and I saw it posted somewhere else uh, this way. I think maybe it was like this. Yeah. Now, I think the orientation that I had is correct, but. I've never seen, yeah, is that like a hanging sleeve? I think this is right, but I did see this orientation, which is interesting because I think, see, isn't that, isn't that up here? Yeah, that's, that's like, it's hanging on a, on a pole, right? Like it's got a hanging sleeve up there. I think so. Um, Polish, interesting, interesting. Picasso or Moreau, exactly felt like sweets. Quiz is still active. Oh dear. Okay. Hang on. I got to close that out. End game. Oh yeah, who won? <laughs> Sorry, we don't know. It's probably Raffle. Wait a minute, we gotta go over here. My quizzes, okay, who won? Who won the game? God, what a, what a drag if we don't know who won. Oh dear. Raffle? The final score ranking is trolling you. Myra, what does it say? <laughs> what, just, just, by, you know, just because, just for, to confirm, what is it? Who does it say one? <laughs> Shit. Um, you picked, um, hmm. So, oh, crap, I forgot to look at who won. All right. Well, the whole thing was really just meant to get that coupon, co coupon code out. And, you know, that mostly happened. Um, so anyway, so this is a, a, a Fran Soika quilt. And I was really interested. And there's this wonderful detail shot of it. Let me get close up. The name of the quilt is Polynesia the Sky. And it says, made by Fran Soika of Novelty, Ohio. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, 
uh, Novelty, Ohio in 1981. Um, paper cutout designed by Henri Matisse. So Polynesia, the sky, and look at this quilting. Very, very lovely, isn't it? Okay. So talk about a label. Hey, we were talking about labels. That's kind of crazy, you know? Um, and yeah, so, so, so this quilt has a, um, has a provenance that as long as the label is there, we will, we will always have. And so I was interested in this person and, uh, and, and I, I looked for more, uh, bought by her. I looked for her, I Googled her and I couldn't find anything on the internet. And that was like, I mean, it was almost two years ago. I feel like it was like two years ago. The first time I came across Francoica. Oh, this is the Matisse, by the way. At least one of the the Matisse. Um, this needs to be turned. Work one of the works you know she she looked at. I mean he's got a lot of the same motifs, but I'm pretty sure this is um, Polynesia Sky, sure 1945. So you could tell you know what she was looking at, right? So it was a couple of years before I actually found more Fran Soika, and I, I was so happy when I saw some more of her work because it I just hadn't and but I recognized that name immediately because I loved that Polynesia quilt so much and the first time that I saw a quilt another quilt by her was in this book and the um the link for this book quilt link oops quilt nerd dot link hang on quilt nerd dot link slash Ohio reserve that will be live right after the show um and raffle this is the moment when like you can help me with that you know i put a message in the discord about it but but i found this quilt um of this book uh a few years ago right and it's another really good one do you remember i think you probably will this book has that wonderful quilt by this lady beverly we looked at her quilt that was made for her son, I believe. Remember this one? It was an intro quilt some months ago, deep in the winter, I think. But it's this amazing quilt called Paul's Quilt 1999 by Beatrice Mitchell. And it's got the chains, you know, quilted in there and the anchors and everything. It's so good. Well, it's in this book. So I'm looking at this thing. Copelia quilt. No, word and bird nerd. I did not. I did not find that quilt. Wow. Okay. But I did find this one. So I'm very interested to know if you know any, any other places where I can, or any other images of her work, I want to know. I just think she's so amazing. So this is her quilt. She made this on, this is, this is Francoica on the cover of this book. So here's the quilt. And it was so different. It was so different from the Polynesia quilt that I was like really blown away. You know, I was really interested in the difference in the style, you know. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's sort of like no other quilt I've seen. I mean, just, well, I mean, maybe that's not true. It's got embroidery in the center, kind of like Harriet Carpenter, maybe. Um, uh, Padma, that link will be live after the show. Because, yeah, it's not active yet. Exactly. Thanks, Raffle. Um, yeah, Karen, the book front background color. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's very orange and yellow. Um, but this, but this is, this is Francoica. And yeah, I mean, it's like Harriet Carpenter had beautiful embroidery and like some cable quilting. And there's this, you know, oh, wow, I didn't even think about it. This uh, horse and buggy, you know, like a Mennonite or Amish person. I, I, I really didn't think about that. Twilight Zone music. So, um, so, here, so here we go. So, so I looked in here, of course, and I can tell you a little bit about Fran Soika. And I have just a few other quilts um, by her to show you tonight because I think she's really special. And this is Fran Soika. And I'll read to you from this book where I got this picture. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, it definitely needs the HTTPS slash slash thing in the beginning, but the, the link will, um, will work after the show when it goes, when it goes live, but yeah. Um, okay, so Fran Soika lives in um, Juga County, G-E-A-U-G-A, -A, a region that has many Amish residents. 
Amish and other Germanic groups migrated from Pennsylvania to East Central Ohio in the early 19th century. The area they settled in was directly south of the Western Reserve. Um, Fran is not Amish. So they, so, so, okay, sorry. For several years, Ohio has been home to the largest number of Amish people in the world. Um, Geoga County, where Fran lives, currently has the fourth largest number of Amish residents in the United States. Fran is not Amish, but her quilt, Monday in Middlefield, which is, that's this one, this quilt, depicts her Amish neighbors and their unique culture and environment. Monday is always laundry day for the Amish, and this is shown in the clothes drying on the line, lines in the quilt center. Except for the clothes and the horse-drawn buggies and the outer borders, this quilt is in a traditional Amish style. It is pieced rather than appliqued. It is made of solid colored fabrics rather than printed ones, and the central block is surrounded by a series of borders. Fran's dark corner blocks, both in the outer and inner borders, are traditional, although they're more frequently seen in Pennsylvania Amish communities than in Ohio. Fran Soika is one of the Western Reserve's best known and most talented quilters. She has received many Best in Show awards for her work and has been commissioned to make quilts for such diverse collections as the American Red Cross and Malcolm and collector Mal Malcolm Forbes. Oh, wow, like Forbes Forbes? Whoa. Pictures of her quilts have been published in many magazines. I'd love to see them. Fran works in many styles, and one of her favorites is American Indian designs. This quilt, depicting the cultural environment of Geoga County, is a favorite of many. Are those, Kitty Hannah uh, asks, you see, that, you know what? I thought that same thing when I read that, Padma. Um, Kitty says, are those horses part of the fabric print then? Exactly. That, that ain't pieced. I mean, that ain't, yeah, that ain't pieced. Those are applique. I mean, for sure they are. Right? I mean, like, yes. <laughs> That's definitely, definitely applique. And, and, so, are, so is this. I mean, that's applique too, for sure. We're not, we're not piece in that business. So that's, that's a, a, a flaw, I think. I mean, I just, we know what we're looking at, right? It's not, it's not a, a pieced thing. Uh, the rest of it is, but there's a good amount of applique on this quilt and that's, that's all right. <laughs> so it's really, it's really neat. Okay, so then, so then I'm looking around, looking, minding my own business and I look at this one and I'll have to see, Raffle, can you check and see? I, I'm sure this one has an affiliate link, The Fine Art of Quilting by Vicki Barker and Tessa Bird. Because we, the, the quilt that we've looked at from this book, at least one quilt we've looked at, is that really crazy um, yellow quilt that's got the, it's got the cafe, like it's like this, this crazy cafe quilt. Um, I didn't mark it. I, used, I, I moved the tab from that quilt to, to the Fran Soika quilt. But I'll find it. It's good. it's like that really strange. Anyway, anyway, I'll find it. But um, but for, but right now we're looking at Fran. And so the the quilt that they have uh in this book by Fran Soika, they actually have two. Okay, Raffle. So I'll put this one. I'll make this link. Uh, this is a really good book too. I'll put the link uh, after the show is done, and it'll be Barker and Bird because the fine art of quilting is sometimes, I mean, some of the, the, the titles of the books are pretty similar, and so they get a little, a little confusing. Um, yeah, Jay Densher, I think the text said traditional Amish quilts don't do applique, uh, but the, that quilter, Fran Soika, is an Amish, exactly. HTTPS, and that quilt nerd dot link slash Barker and Bird. Okay, so that'll be live later. So here's what they have, and they have some, they have a couple really cool quilts. So Fran Soika, um, Fran says of this quilt, it's called The Parakeet and the Mermaid. So a very Matisse again, right? This quilt is eight feet, 11 inches by seven feet, four inches. And it was, yeah, Susan, totally. And it was made in 1985. So it's The Parakeet and the Mermaid, eight, Eight feet, 11 inches by seven feet, four inches. Yeah. And Fran says, I was commissioned to do the Nutcracker for the Cleveland Ballet. It was raffled as a fundraising project. These are the set designs used in the Nutcracker and many of the fabrics 
or cuttings from the costumes. Mm -hmm. The parakeet and the mermaid is inspired by Henri Matisse's cutout designs. Yeah, seaweed. Me too, Robin's Nest. I mean, so isn't that eight, eight feet by seven feet? Almost nine feet, really. And it was used as a set piece. I mean, as the, the set. I mean, I would, oh man, I'd love to see pictures of that, um, of that ballet. And you could find it, couldn't you? The Cleveland Ballet, 1985. I'm sure there are pictures like in the papers, right, of that. I love it too, Molly. Isn't it wonderful? The parrot, here's the parakeet right there in blue, and then the mermaid down there. I could make an emote from the mermaid, but I don't, I don't think it would read. Um, love Matisse, so word and Bernard. I've often wanted to make a Matisse-inspired quilt. Blue and white nudes, for example. Look. Fran Soika for the win. Okay, so there's another quilt from this book. And this is the other Nutcracker set piece quilt. And so, so these, um, so she says, I was commissioned to do the Nutcracker for the Cleveland Ballet. It was raffled as a fundraising project. I'm not sure what that quote means. It was raffled. What was raffled? The, the quilts were raffled. It's like that, that quote's kind of out of order, which is weird. Um, but yeah, the Nutcracker. I mean, if you've seen the Nutcracker, you know that there's all these wonderful, these are scenes from the show, you know, from, from that magical land. Oh, the Nutcracker. It's been a long time since I, I saw it. Um, we go to the Goodman Christmas Carol every year. The Goodman Theater here does, you know, Dickens Christmas Carol, and it's, it's a family tradition, and we love to see it. But the Nutcracker... You know, we, we should probably, we should do it. We should do it. It's been a minute. We, I mean, Des Mo the Des Moines Ballet, the Des Moines, uh, was it the Des Moines Ballet? I feel like there was another word in there, the Des Moines Area Ballet or something like that. They had uh, the Nutcracker every year. And I mean, it was, it's wonderful. If you can, if you can go on a school field trip, I recommend it. Do you think, Padma asks, um, hey, thanks, Charles. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thanks for subscribing for three months. You're on a two month streak. We can uh, we can tell that oh wait where's that um, we can tell that you know the quilt nerd vibe is like you know you're into it and I'm glad we have a lot of we have a lot of fun here and you're part of that you're like a really big part of the show so thank you um, so Padma do you think the snow is painted on the middle section let's see let's see I don't know well, you know it looks kind of embroidered actually I can zoom in as close as I can I mean. You see, like I kind of see some edge to it that seems um, like it's thread. I'm not totally sure, but it looks like it. Okay, so a couple more Francoica quilts. There we go. And oh my gosh, it's nine o'clock. Heavens. All right, so here is, this is one that was um, designed by Kurt Boringer, Boringer in 1981, but Fran quilted it. And this one, where was this? Where did I go? No, oh no. Where is my thing? It wasn't in that book. I've got it written down somewhere. But this was interesting that she had she made this one uh, from a design in 1981 by this guy Carl. And and I'm gonna skip ahead really quick because this is similar to this one. I'll go back to this. But you know this one, the Ed Larson quilt that we've seen many times. This one uh, was in the Fabric of a Nation exhibit. And Fran Soika was the quilt maker on this one. It's Ed Larson, and it's called uh, it's the Nixon Quilt. And um, Ed Larson designed it, and it's a pretty famous quilt, but it was Fran Soika who did the work. Nixon Resignation, 1979, designed by Ed Larson, quilted by Fran Soika. Um, figures depicted are Jimmy Carter, Woodrow Wilson, Abraham Lincoln, um, Ulysses S. Grant, Lyndon B. Johnson, Eisenhower, Roosevelt, da 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 da. Um, yeah. Figures have initials, nicknames, or last names embroidered in black or around them. Yeah, so that was part of the, the, the show. She did one with Larson called Clinton Wins. Word and Bernard, I would like to see these, the, the, the quilts that you have. I mean, I, I like to have a Fran Soika file going because I really want to do a YouTube video about her, just like a real quickie, you know, like I'm working on these like quick, 
quick little videos about people. And Fran is one I would really like to do a video on. So yeah, I mean, you've got, if you've got those images and if they're high res too, they kind of pretty much have to be high res to be able to, to use them. Um, I would love that. I'd love that. So anyway, so this is kind of like, it's not, uh, Ed Larson, obviously, but like the same kind of same kind of deal. Highly, highly detailed pictorial, um, just expert, right? The water looks so great, amazing. Thanks, Word and Britta. That's awesome. That's awesome. I will take I will take anything. Okay, so then this is the big finish, you guys. This is a big finish. I didn't realize we had been on this long, but so I'm looking around on the internet as I do for Fran Soika, trying to find more quilts, you know. And I come across a Reddit post. This is a Reddit post from a month ago. Okay. Now I don't use Reddit for a lot of stuff, but I do use it for some stuff. And one month ago, a you know, and Reddit is you know, it's I don't know how do you describe Reddit? It's like it's Reddit. It can be kind of a disaster. Uh, it's a, it's not a chat room. It's a thread. It's like. It's a chat room that's open and I don't know, it's Reddit, it's its own thing. And it can be a really scary place, especially if you make a video about quilt clothes because a lot of people get really mad and gross about you on Reddit. Um, so you try to stay away from, you know, Reddit sometimes. But, um, but I found Fran Soika had been, had been mentioned in a Reddit post a month ago. And I was like, what? And this picture was in the Reddit post. It's a huge, yeah, a message board. Thank you very much. I couldn't think of the word. So here's the title of the Reddit post. Fran Soika, Native American turtle wall quilts from Goodwill. And it was posted by a username, Gorns Not Tinny. I'll just put it in here. I, I posted in the thread um, that I knew about a, a Twitch show about quilts that was going to talk about this post and talk about Fran Soika. And... Um, and I'm mentioning this post, a Gorn's Not Tinny. I mean, on Reddit, if you're a Reddit person, that's the screen name. Um, this is what the person said. So I got these at Goodwill. There's two quilts that you'll see. I'm not much of a quilt guy, but I recognize and appreciate the amount of work that goes into them. These two small wall quilts were going too cheap not to buy. When I could, I looked them up, and apparently, Fran Soika is some kind of a big deal as far as quilts go. Anyway, I wanted to let people get a chance to look at them. They're pretty cool, and I appreciate more and more the amount of work that quilting takes. They look to be hand-sewn, but I'm not really... I know, I know, I know. Uh, but I'm not really among the co cognoscenti. Cognoscenti. So correct me if I'm wrong. The rainbow turtle is 27 by 23. And the turtle riders, which is the first quote we saw, are 28 and a half by 26. Both are labeled 2000, which is uh, assuming, uh, I'm assuming when they were made. Since I'm completely, almost completely ignorant when it comes to this kind of stuff, any info on technique, value, history, and such would be appreciated. <laughs> I mean, look at that. Can you imagine this? Okay, so, and oh, and I forgot to say, it's in the quilting thread. So, and Jill Alex, like, <laughs> let's just all, like, hear, hear you out, Jill. Reddit is definitely a big steaming pile of hot, toxic garbage. I'm so surprised you found something decent there. I can't agree with you more, Jill. It's just, I don't know. It's a place for trolls. It's a troll farm, and I honestly am scared to click on Reddit. I have a screen name that has nothing to do with my life, because sometimes I watch reality TV, and it's fun to, like, <laughs> like, you know, go and see what people are saying about like 90 day fiance. It's just fun, but it's also mean spirited. And it's like, ugh, I could take like five minutes of Reddit and then I'm like, oh, I got to get out of here. So when I even saw that Fran Soika was mentioned in a Reddit thread, I was like, what? This is crazy. And so I had to log in and everything. But look at this. Hold on. Hold on. This is Fran Soika. A, a Fran Soika, two Fran Soika quilts. This quilt. Turtle. Look at her name. Look, it's right there. He found them in the Goodwill. Can you believe it? There you go. Raffle Waffle posted the quilting thread. Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's sad they were in a good well. I mean, I can't, I cannot agree more. It's crazy. You often find it useful. Okay. P people are saying Reddit can be, you know, it can be useful. Um, 
<laughs> Stephanie Cake, yep, this underscores my plans for the you better not give this to Goodwill quilt label. Exactly, exactly. Um, and so, yeah, so I, I just obviously was like, oh my God, I can't wait to show this to everybody because, I mean, he saved him, you know, he's got him. And people in the chat or people in the, um, the thread couldn't, they didn't have a lot to say about Fran other than to say thank you for being told about her, you know. So, yeah, so Fran Soika quilts, you know, visit the Goodwill, check to see what quilts are in there. And if they're, if they're signed, hey, you know, how about that? Another person. That's so weird. There it is. There's our weird quilt nerd thing. I mean, there's another person embroidering their name on the front of their quilt. Did not think, did not put that in there on purpose. I did not. Um, I need, you know, it's been a minute. Yeah, exactly, Raffle. It's been a minute since I went to a, a, a Goodwill. You know, like they have, uh, I think, Unique stores here in Chicago. That's what they're called. I think they're called Unique. I wonder if they're still around. Surely they are. But I'd like to go there and see what they've got, you know, in terms of in uh, hanging on hangers, right? They're usually hanging on clip hangers, any blankets or, or quilts or coverlets or anything that people have at those places. Usually they're clipped on pants hangers. I, I should go. I should go and look. I mean, this makes me really want to go and look because to hang a Fran Soika up on your wall that you got for like, I don't know, five dollars. Well, how did they get there? I don't know. That's what I was saying about women's work, you know, valuing these things. So. um Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, Reddit has its has its has its gifts. <laughs> um, so okay, well, I am so glad that you're here tonight. That you came tonight, and we saw some pretty beautiful quilts by um, Miss Carpenter, La Carpenter, and La Soika, and we did a quiz <laughs> that was almost perfect, <laughs> almost perfect. Um, and yeah, I mean, we did a poll. And we know that we're going to look at 1986 on Quilter's Newsletter Friday. And I think, yeah, I mean, I think it was a pretty good show. Uh, I'm a little bit tired because it's been a very long day full of lots of things. But I know that when Quilt Nerd is coming, like it gives me kind of a, a wind in my sails, boost in my sails. Um, I hope if you want to, you'll go over to my blog. Um, that's not anything I want you to subscribe. To. You need to subscribe. It doesn't cost anything to read. You don't need to sign up. You don't need a coupon code. My blog is free. It shall always be free, really. And uh, there are no ads on my website. There never have been and there never will be. I don't care. I don't care. I hate ads on the internet. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. And uh, yeah, you can just read my writing. And there's years and years and years of it there if you're interested. <laughs> if you really need something to do. But, um, but it's been a long time since I blogged for all kinds of reasons. But it feels like the best. I just love it so much. And I, and I think I think I haven't really felt like myself in some ways for a while. And so I picked up my blog again. And I've been writing in my journal again. And yeah, yeah, it's good. So yeah, go read my blog if you want. I talk about the race between winter and spring. It's on. Um, oh, how did Oh, yeah. How did Eric and I meet? Thank you. Thank you for highlighting that message, Robin. OK, well, for the oh, everybody wants it. OK. Well, here we go. So I'm going to tell you the story. I'm going to tell you the whole story. Okay? And that gives me a spring in my stuff and this barbecue crisp. All right. Yeah. So thank you for reminding me. <laughs> so I had the worst day of my life. And like, and this was in 2018, uh, sorry, it was January 17th, 2019. And I had the worst day of my life. And I've had pretty bad days. I've had, you know, catastrophic illness, you know, as a child, you know, the family was torn apart. And, you know, I mean, like I've had like, you know, my, I've had people sick. I've, you know, went through a divorce, which was bad. I mean, you know, it was, I've, I've had them. I've had him. I was 40 years old. Is that right? 39? Anyway, I was old enough to have bad days. This was a really bad one. It was the, it was the worst. Um, you know, I wanted a dog, and I even put down money for the dog, picked out the dog, and then I got bad news from my building about how I couldn't have the dog. And so it, kinda, it was kind of like, like my dog died, you know? So that's not good. That day, that happened. 
I was seeing this guy, it was kind of cash, but it was also, it had been long enough that it was like, uh, and he really hurt my feelings and I broke it off. So, okay, dog, matters of the heart, you know, great. So that's like two big things, you know, that was not good. And then um, I had gone to get my checkup for my, I had ulcerative colitis and lots of surgeries and the surgeries were really bad. They, they went really badly and I was really sick for a really long time. And I have to go get this particular test every few years. And when they did the particular test that around that time, the doctor was not thrilled about, you know, so then you, so I had that. And I just give you sort of this overview of like how bad the day was, like the, the day was bad. And my family, you know, we've never had big, nasty conflicts before. I mean, my mom and dad got divorced, but you know, we had never had like a fight in the family, but we were having one. And it was pretty bad and and it was awful and it was awful it was the worst part of all of that you know and so i i got off the phone with my sister that day and it was a terrible phone call and it was just like things were said to me that like devastated me and like you know it was the worst day of my life like it was really terrible and everything was so bad and I didn't know what to, I didn't know what to do with myself and I don't smoke cigarettes I like smoking I do but you can't you can't smoke cigarettes and so I don't smoke cigarettes you know from time to time I'm like oh stressed out and I do and I'm like why am I doing this but but I didn't know what to do with myself everything was so terrible I just thought well I'm gonna go for a walk and and I guess I'll just like ha have a, a cigarette like I didn't know it was nighttime and it was cold it was January and I didn't I felt empty, you know, so, so I, I sort of left. I, I took my keys and my wallet. I didn't take my purse or anything. I just put on my coat and I got my keys in my wallet and I just went walking. And I got a pack of cigarettes and I like smoked some cigarettes or something. I walked all around and I lived downtown in the loop. And I walked and walked and walked and it was cold. And I turned to go home at one point. And I was like, why? <laughs> Why? Why go home? I don't have anyone there. I just have pain there. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do at home? You know, what do I do at home, period? Like, I don't, the dog, the guy, you know, like the family, like I was like, I don't want to go home. Why would I go there? It doesn't matter. And that was a sad feeling. And, and I don't go into bars and like hang out. <laughs> like I just, I'm antisocial. I mean, not antisocial, but I'm socially very, very awkward. And, this is easier for me than like human interaction. A lot of times, like face to face, I get nervous. So, and I don't go in by myself, but that night I went to a bar in my neighborhood, Casey's Pub. I had been in like three times, I think, in my life. And, and I'd lived there for like nine years down there, but it was on Printer's Row, really beautiful street, Printer's Row in the South Loop. And it's a pub, you know, it's warm, inviting looking. And I was like, I think when your life falls apart, you go in and like have a beer at a bar. <laughs> I think that's like what you do, like a shot and a beer, you know? And so I just went in there and I was wearing a red sweater and sneakers and my hair looked like it did in that picture. And I went in there <laughs> and <clears throat> I sat I sat down and there were people in the bar, like some people were playing pool. It's not a big pub. And um, there was like somebody down there. It's a nice oak bar. You know, I mean, it's not fancy, but it's just a good pub, you know? And, and, and I sit down and this guy is sitting over there, sort of on my left. And he's got like a, and I don't care really. I order a shot of tequila and a beer, you know? Cause tequila, like that's my drink, you know? I can, I can drink my tequila. And, uh, and, and, and I look at, I look over at him, I look at the TV and I'm like, oh, I just didn't want to be home. It's fine. And I look, but I, but I was like kind of lonely, you know, I just wanted to like not be me or I wanted to listen to somebody talk. I didn't want to listen to my own self, my own head. And I turned to this guy and he's got like this bushy beard and this stocking cap pulled over his head. And he's, he's, he's playing the New York times crossword on his phone. And so he didn't look like an ax murderer. And I knew he was like, at least somewhat intelligent because he was playing the New York Times crossword on his phone. So I was like, and I said to him, hand to God, this is what I said to him. I turned to him and I said, would you like to talk? 
And it wasn't, it, I didn't have any beguile in me. I didn't have any flirt in me. I didn't have any, any spice in me. I just wanted to talk to another human being about anything. And would you like to talk? And he turns to me and he, and these blue eyes, you know, this kills me, but I didn't care. I did not care about anything of, of that nature, but he turns to me and he kind of looked at me and was like, sure. It was like looking for visible, you know, wounds or whatever. I mean, like, you know, and so, so he said, sure. And he put away his phone and we started to talk and we talked about all kinds of things. And he told me that he uh, was in Chicago from Seattle and he we talked about what we did and stuff. And, and he had worked for the Obama White House on healthcare.gov. And, and I had Obamacare at that time. And I was like, oh yeah, like the website where you sign up for, for Obamacare. And he was like, yeah. He's like, you remember when it was like a total disaster and it didn't work? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I remember that. And he's like, well, I was one of the people who came in to fix it. And I mean, I had had that health thing going on, you know, with me and Obamacare was paying for me to get my test. And, and he said that, and I was like, you saved the world. You saved the world. You, you did, you saved the world. And he was like, oh, I don't know about that, but he, he was just, he was really special. Oh, hey, Jarek Pod. Jarek Pod, okay, hi. I'm telling the story about how I met my husband because it's, it's our anniversary tomorrow. Usually we don't do this kind of thing, but anyway. So he saved the world and, and I told him about quilts and everything and, and I didn't talk about like why my day was so bad, but maybe I mentioned something. We talked for, you know, a couple hours. And he was a gentleman, he didn't try to take me home and I wasn't interested in anything like that anyway, but he gave me his number and I gave him my number just almost kind of like as like a pleasantry, like a etiquette almost, you know, like that was a great conversation. If you're ever in town, you know, da da da. So I went home and I felt a lot better, you know, and I wasn't alone that for that while. And the next day he texted me and he's like, hey, before I go back to Seattle, you want to get lunch? And and so we did. And then he went back and we talked on the phone for, yeah, Padma. Like, I, I'm like trying to like, like, I could, if we were all together, it'd be, it'd be kind of more emotional, but I don't want to be weird, but, but he did save my life. Um, so he went back to Seattle and we talked on the phone and he was in a relationship that was really, you know, it had been done for a long time and they both knew it. And, you know, I was not after anybody. <laughs> I was after just, I don't know. It was a strange time in my life, but I was definitely not interested in a relationship. And and he had his thing going on out there in Seattle and his job and everything, whatever. But we talked on the phone because we didn't know each other. And I was like, I said, what if we let's play a game, basically. What if we tell each other everything like I don't know you from Adam. I don't know who you are. I have no designs on you. I don't care about you like I think you're really interesting and that's great but like I don't I just you want to do you want to talk and how about we tell each other everything like every disgusting thing we've ever done every desire we have that we're ashamed of every terrible thing that we did or that we think we did every way that we've been wronged everything 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 we don't have anything to lose let's just do it and see what it's like because even though, I mean, I've had love in my life, I've had great relationships and I, and I was you know, married briefly, whatever, but have I ever been totally, completely, 100% honest with anybody, anybody, a hundred percent, thousand percent honest, a thousand percent. I am with him and, and we both lived pretty interesting lives, pretty wild lives. You know, I've got a lot of, I keep two sets of books, you know? And so, because I don't know, I just, I got a wild side, whatever, wild streak. And I told him everything. And I would, I would be like, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this, uh, this story. I think you're not going to like me after I tell you. I mean, I haven't murdered anybody or done anything like that. But I mean, I was like, I don't know. How about this one? And he's like, I don't care. Or he was like, okay. And he would tell me this and I'd be like, oh, okay. And we just weren't phased. It was just interesting. And, 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 and it was like that. And, and so we talked on the phone. And then I said, at one point, you know, a couple months into that, I was like, what's happening here? What is going on here? What is this? And he, I was like, I, I don't know. And so he came to see me in Chicago. And we both kind of were like, we sure did, we kind of need to see if we want to like, 
kiss, you know, because like we, this is real. Wow. We, we knew each other better than anyone had ever known us. Um, and so he came to Chicago and I met him at Miller's pub. I was waiting for him at Miller's pub and he walked in the door and I was like, I definitely want to kiss him. You know, it was like, it was like, and so, uh, and so we, we, uh, lunch invitation, right? Dean Marie. And so, so yeah, we kissed and it was very nice. And, uh, and then we were, he, he went back to Seattle, came out of where, and we, we had fallen in love. I mean, that was just, it was obvious, you know? And so he came to see me the second time in, in Chicago and we went out for ramen and we were at ramen and he said, he'd never been married before. He was in 42, I think. And he was like, we were talking about it. And he's like, will you, will you, will you marry me? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> of course. And, and he said, but, but I said to him, I was like, but I will marry you, but you have to do three things. You have to promise me three things. You have to listen to me. That was my second thing. The first thing I said, you, you have to have a job. You always, you, you have to have a job or some meaningful means of income because my dad and like men that I've been with just somehow <laughs> end up like not working and I can't do it. I, I understand people go through things, but I can't. I cannot do that again. I will not do it again. I will not do it again. I cannot. <laughs> So I said to him, you have to have a job. I'll marry you, but you, if you have to have a job and you have to listen to me. You have to listen to me. And whatever that means, you know, you have to listen to me. And then, and you have to, um, you have to give me presents. <laughs> and he was like, and we went and got a ring after that. And he did it officially a couple, uh, maybe a month later at Ramansan where we were in the booth of where we were sitting. He asked me officially on his knee, and he gave me the ring and there was this huge group of boys, like, um, like a high school team or something, a bunch of them, like 20, you know, these like high school age boys or like freshman college boys, whatever. And they were like after a big meet or something. And they saw him get down on his knees, on his knee and, and open the ring box. And they were like, oh my God. God, dude, 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 dude. And they saw it happen. And he was like, will you marry me? I was like, yes, I will. And I was like, yes. And I held the ring up and I was like, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna marry him or something like that. It was very rom-com. And, uh, and then, yes, his three quests, Quilty Mouse, his three quests indeed. And yeah. And, and then we went to City Hall and it was four months after we met. I mean, and, and I'll tell you this one thing. I'll tell you this one thing. That's a crazy way to do stuff. And, you know, and we have had trouble, you know, we've had t hard times, but I, when I tell you I love them more every day, it's real. And, and I can tell you, when I tell you I watch that trash TV, 90 Day Fiance and Love After Lockup and all this stuff, there is something that happens in every single one of those relationships that fail. And then what happens is that they're lying to each other. They do not tell each other everything about them. They keep something back. They, you know, and it's totally understandable because because human, we're afraid and we're ashamed, and you know, you don't want to say. That's what I used to do. It was like I'm not gonna. Oh, that 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 part of me is not gonna stay with me, or you know, that I, I don't have to. You know, you just you want to. You don't want to be left. You don't want to be abandoned, and so you. Chris Rock puts it really well. He says when you when you first meet somebody and you go on a date, you're not meeting them. You're meeting their representative. You know. And, and I think that's really true. And so in other relationships I had, I was mostly myself, of course, but I was afraid of being fully myself because they couldn't possibly want to be with me if I was fully myself with all my insecurities and my foibles and arrogance and, you know, idiocy. But he, but we told each other the truth. <laughs> oh, Kenny. I got down on a knee. The only thing was he had to help me up. <laughs> That's really good. That's really good. Anyway, the difference between this relationship with Eric and every other relationship I've ever had is that he knows everything about me and he loves me anyway. And that's so awesome. And I know everything about him and I love him anyway. I love him because of it. And I just... I just, I don't know. And I know, I know him. And, and I told him, I'm like, if you ever feel like lying to me, 
just just know that you just don't have to do that as weird as it is or freaky as it is or as confusing as it is whatever feelings you have you just tell me you, you know that you know and we just know and I'm a really bad liar anyway, but I mean, he just, there's no fear. I know who he is and he knows who I am. Oh, Christmas. Oh, that's nice. Well, I've really gone on. Hey, it's okay. Well, that's, that's the, that's the thing. Yeah. So we tell each other the truth and that's it. That's it. And that's why I love him. And, and he's very funny and silly. Stop at the pub. It's true, Padma. Oh my God, Christmas. I don't know if you, I don't know if you've met that person, but if you walk into a bar and be like, I want to tell you everything about me and, and tell you all the truth about me, then it'll work like, some, like a charm. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's more, but, that, but I'll end it there. And I will say that, you know, the, the pandemic, I mean, we got married April 20th, 2019. And then in a year, it was the pandemic. And if we had made a mistake, we surely would have known we surely, hey, pastrami tacos. Oh, it's so good to see you. We, bip. We surely would have known, but, but it was a gift because, I mean, we got to spend that time together and we travel a lot. And, you know, that first year, you know, we would go here and there. He was working in DC and doing all this stuff. And, and it was, it, the pandemic was so terrible for so many people, all of us in so many ways. But to be able to be with this man and not have a trip, another trip, another trip interrupt us was like, it was a gift. It was like heaven sent. So we're going to go to dinner tomorrow night. And uh, that's it. I'm like, I don't, I don't have any. We're trying to save our money. We got to, we got to do something to our bathroom and our kitchen. They're a mess. So that's what we're going to do. Um, thank you for letting me tell that story. Thank you for reminding me to tell it. Um, yeah, that's it. Four months, man. Oh, oh, the last thing. This is the last thing. The last thing. I promise. I remember what I was going to say. It was important. Years ago, I remember I was like teaching. Well, when I was teaching quilts, you know, quilt making in church basements, you know, all over, women would tell me it wasn't, it didn't just happen once, but I would meet because we would talk, you know, you give your instruction in the morning and then you talk and you're making your rounds as a teacher, checking on people, saying hi, talking, and women talk and women and men, you know, and, and, and women would tell me the story of how they met their husband because I was single and they're like, oh, have you met anybody? And like, oh, I was like, oh, no, I don't know. I kind of like being single. The marriage thing didn't work out for me. I kind of like being a bachelorette, you know, whatever. And I would ask them about how they met their husbands and their, and their wives. And, and, and there were times when people would say, I met my husband and six months we were married. Or my husband and I got married. We were married within a couple months. And I, I love him every day. And I just remember thinking like, God, that sounds awesome. Wow. And, and a lot of them were like, oh, yeah, this is my second. This is my do-over. You know, the first, first one didn't work out. Had to do a practice round. But me and George will be together till we're dead. And I was just like, damn. I didn't even hope for it. I didn't even want to hope for something like that. But it was so cool. And I got it, you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just never, I'll just never, I'll just never be sad, I swear. Well, I'll, yeah, I mean, with him around, I'm just... I just can't believe my life. So, okay, that is enough, I think. Uh, thanks, everybody. Um, happy anniversary and take care of yourselves. And I don't want to rush off, but good heavens, this is a long one tonight. I don't know how it got that way, but mwah, I will see you on Thursday. And yeah, good night, everybody. Okay, <laughs> I'm shy now. Okay, bye. Thank you for all the well wishes. Okay, bye.